Boom. What's up, guys? We are live. So the event that you guys have all been waiting for is here. John is going to be debating, uh, you know, people who are critical. This is going to be a good one. But first, let's all get pumped up by listening to our new trailer. How do you feel about big dicks? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Sarah J on the casting couch. Yes. She's never done this before. <laughs> you are not to have sex with other girls, no, but she's not. Uh, Fuck that shit. What are some of the biggest mistakes you've heard Shoulder fuckers. All right. So Damn, let me. That's a dope trailer. I know. Thanks, I for, thanks for that little clip of me and Liz. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let me start off by laying out some ground rules because this is going to be quite different than uh, pretty much every stream I've ever done. So we're going to be actually enforcing some rules. So there's going to be – let me point this out. So for anyone who is coming on to debate John, there's two rules that they have to adhere to. Number one is there's no trolling uh, and no interrupting, right? So, for example – and this, this goes both ways, so John's not allowed to interrupt either – and then also the second rule is there's no rudeness or disrespect. So, for example, if you want to challenge a claim about John, then that's totally fine. But you can't be like, yo, dude, I think you're a fact, blah, 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 blah. Like, that's clearly out of line. So, and there will be a one, stri there will be a one strike policy. So, <clears throat> if you're blatantly disrespectful or you start, like, you know, trolling and shit, then, you know, we get one strike and then you will be kicked off. So, we do have yeah, to be, yeah, I'll, I'll say a quick word too. Like, to be honest, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to debate anyone in the space about anything. But I do know that there people are going to try to do low below slander narratives, other fucking nonsense gets kicked around, you know, myths, this and that. And that's I'm not going to fucking sit there and and um, be subjected to that. So I just wanted it very clear to Alex that I want this fucking kept in check so that it's a fair debate. Yeah. So, for example, if there's something that you want to challenge about John, then you can be like, oh, I don't think you're 50. Like, you know, I don't think your 1500 late count is legit. Like, but you can say it that way. You can be like, yo, I think you don't fought, you know, you're, you're fucking, I don't know, whatever. So anyway, you guys get it every way they want, as long as it doesn't turn into fucking making shit up. So. OK, so the second rule is we're going to have for the chat. So we're also going to be moderating the chat now. So in the chat, you can speak your mind. You can say whatever you want. But there's no spamming, so just keep it to like a reasonable amount of uh, you know comments and personal insults. So just don't make it personal. Just keep it respectful. Uh, those are the two rules. Now let me point out my role in this whole thing. So this is going to be one of those live streams where I'm actually going to be fairly quiet. I'm going to be just the moderator. I'm not going to actually get in on the debate. The only times I will comment is if there's something that I know to be factually true that I can back up. So for example, if someone says, oh, John has never fucked a stripper. Well, I was there one time when he picked up a stripper, so I can vouch for that. But aside from I that- I brought him back to your house on the first time we ever met. Right, so aside from that, aside from uh, things that I can personally verify that I was there for, I will generally be quiet. I will also be enforcing the rules. So for example, if there's interrupting and shit like that, I will step in, but other than that, uh, and if I have like some funny jokes, but other than that, I will just be pretty much chilling. So next instructions on how no. to go ahead. It's, I'm going to be debating multiple people too. To, so we're bringing on, and these are, I, I was just informed about these guys like right before, like the topics slightly. So it's mostly just ran, random guys that, what do they do? They called in or some shit. Yeah. So, so that, that kind of brings me to my next point. So in terms of how you can join, um, you know how you can join this whole thing so we have a stream yard but no we have a cell phone number in the description so what in order to join you have to text that number then you have to agree to the rules and then we send you the link so if you want to do that like if you're watching this and you're like oh shit, i want to get in on this then just text that number we're going to have someone just don't, uh, just don't show your fucking dick again or somebody else's please yeah there's no there's no uh dick showing allowed um uh, okay someone said moderating the chat is a pussy move I don't think it is. I think we have to keep this on point. Uh, again, like you can say whatever you want. It's not like we're saying you can't like speak your mind. All we're saying, literally the only rules is no spamming because that detracts the quality of the chat, uh, of the conversation, and no like massive personal attacks. That's it. Like everything else you can speak for. It. Everything else is free game. Uh, okay, let's uh, get going. So let's bring on our first person. His name is Anonymous. So we're going to bring him on right now. What's his name? Anonymous. Oh, great. What's up, dude? 
Yeah, there's there's no rule they got it. they can't they don't have to show their face. No, no, because a lot of people don't want to show their face. If we did can it you, that way, then there would be like no one who would actually show up. Can you hear me fine? Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. No, uh, thanks for coming on. Okay, so to start off, John, why do you like in every interaction you see you're a DJ? Can you just give us like a brief description of that? Can you talk a little louder. Every what? Why do you say you're a DJ in interactions? Mystery. Okay, so I, I start off as a mystery student, uh, mystery method. Okay, in his book, he says there's a notion called cementing your identity. He says you can import a bunch of social proof, high value, and other things based on the girl's mental model of a certain thing. In the example in his book, he says something like a guy saying, hi, I'm Joe, I'm an accountant, which is value neutral or even value negative, uh, potentially, given the, the mental model, you know, like that's like a boring job potentially, versus hi, I'm Bender, I'm in a rock band. Now, I think I'm Bender, I'm in a rock band sounds cheesy, but since I did DJ before I got into pickup and I played all over clubs in Philly, I played a 5,000 person event in an indoor sports arena at the, is the actual biggest thing that I did. But to me, that accomplishes a lot of shit up front because they're going to think he knows a lot of women. He has an adventurous life. His life's probably more fun than mine. Um, social, socially proof. This guy's probably trustworthy. So it's accomplishing a whole shitload of things very fucking quick so that I don't have to spend a ton of time in the interaction. I already have a good leg up. So it just gives an extra advantage. It's not necessary. It's not a, a component that's you know absolutely critical and you have to do it. And whenever there's little things like that, like like I also tell clients to, to fudge their age on Tinder if they're too old to look to put it what they look look like. And I, I say balance it against your own ethical system. OK, but the, there's like minor examples of little uh you know, twistings like the the Tomorrowland DJing stuff, right? But that accomplishes, uh, uh, you're basically writing off uh, mental models that they're attracted to. Okay, makes sense. And then how do you like bring it up to the girl later? Once you tell her, do you tell her you're not a DJ? Well, I have a SoundCloud. I have DJ mixes. And I actually do like DJ like house parties and shit here in Brazil. I have equipment. I play parties in my own house and friends' houses and stuff like that. I haven't played at any clubs in Brazil. But it doesn't really come up. Like I have, I have students that just replicate that, even though they've never DJed. And ninety-five times out of a hundred, you know, probably like almost never will the girl be like, "Show me, you know, prove that." But when they do say that, I do have a SoundCloud. I do know how to DJ. I do know how to mix music. So, you know, but it, it does. Most people think that like that's going to be like something that's going to like blow up later, but that's not the case. They don't really uh, question. Okay, here again, like, all right, let me just let me just mention this guy here in the chat. He never DJed in a Philly club. Can you mark some of these things down? I'll produce proof of this. People think I didn't work for Lockheed Martin. They think I don't have college degrees. I can prove all that stuff. I can show my college certificates. I'll just do a massive proof video. I'll show you guys all that stuff. People will still say that I created the diplomas and stuff like that. But I can prove all that stuff. Yes, I did play in Philly. I played the Starlight Ballroom with a thousand people. There's like a headline uh, DJ I played with alongside Getter. It was like 2011. So get this fucking blind sheep guy here too. He's always constantly trolling about me being, you know, gay and a fraud, blah, blah, blah. He's already broken the rules. Blind sheep is out of here. Okay, next question. Okay, just to add a little bit more to this one. Um, did you actually there was one of your infields it was a day game in vegas you opened the girl yep. and then it was like an african woman lady if you can pull that infield up that would be great but if not it's okay i know I'm what you're sure. talking about yeah that it one. was okay. the it was the black chick on the street yeah correct yeah that one so you go up to her you're right. crossing the street you're like can i speak to you for a minute can i speak with you and then you stop her and then immediately first things first you say uh, I'm a DJ. I'm opening for Steve Aoki. And for those of you who yeah. don't know who Steve Aoki is, he's one of the best DJs in the world. And you talk yeah. about how you can get her in Hakkasan and all of that. And then she, yeah. once you say that, you can see that she's interested. Can you like clear yeah. why you do that? What's exactly? the problem? What's the problem there? You're using Steve Aoki to try to get in with a chick. So that's, what? That's a, okay. If there's nothing wrong with that, then. That's okay. okay, so so there's a guy, Insane Flirt, that he went and did an infield breakdown. He's like, this guy has no game. The chick clearly wasn't interested. I end up banging that chick. And I fucking, I have like, um, I probably d dig up. We didn't, we have, let me think. I don't think we have infield date. 
But that, but oh, that chick yeah, basically, yeah. That, basically, that chick basically came to meet us at Hakusan, and I was making out her Hakusan and pulled her from Hakusan. But like, um, insane flirt was like, this guy has no game because of you know because of he, whatever stupid reasons. And I emailed him and I was like, I have shitloads of infield pulls on camera, and he's like, show me some. And I sent him them, and he's like, wow, this is really good game. I really respect this. And he took the video down, and I can show those emails as well. I'm not saying you don't have game. I'm just saying in that specific example, it didn't seem, it didn't see, you seemed like you were using Steve Aoki to just like immediately, you know, the girl, you didn't speak with her. That, that, that's not like the, it's not like a core component of the game strategy. It's just in Vegas when like the girl had just arrived in the town, she didn't know where she was going that night. That was just leveraging a known figure to get her to come to Hakusan. Okay, thanks for clearing up. I have one more thing. Can I can I go for it, Alex? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, so you talk about Coach Kyle. I don't watch Coach Kyle, for those of you that are asking. But you say that because he's 120 late count, therefore his game blows. But you never actually... There's critiqued. a lot of other reasons. Uh, but you never actually went into those reasons and critiqued his infield. Like yeah, I did. Does. Well, I didn't critique his infield. I can do that. Uh, can, you, can, you make some, can someone make some notes here? Can you make some notes? Yeah, that would be great. I can oh. do an infield breakdown of coach Kyle. I, I did in a video with coach Kyle, I showed that he paid RST Madison last year in 2021, $15,000 for a boot camp. Okay. He's coach Kyle is supposed to be a coach and Madison sucks anyways, but uh, he's basically like a no name. Um, but he paid $15,000 to coach Kyle. And he also paid Max Tornov, who's a, who's running a full blown scam called Freedom Business Mentoring that he stole from these German guys called the Ball Egg Brothers. And he's got fucking, you know, stuff incorporated and in, in accounts offshore and all this stuff. That's a the Ball Egg Brothers came under criminal charges in Germany. Okay, Max ripped their entire model. It's a full blown scam. And I showed how Max is hiring girls in Kiev under the pretense that he will get them out of, you know, this was before the war situation. But he was hiring them under the pretense that he would get them out of Ukraine into Austria or Germany and have a better life. And then everyone thought that he was getting these girls through social circle and cold approach, but they were paid. And I did an interview on my channel where there was a, a guy that was close friends with a girl that had friends living in Max's or, or going to Max's hangouts and stuff like that. And they were all paid. So um, if Coach Kyle is getting coached by just a scam business coach to make more money, and a game coach when he when he's supposed to be a coach and then there's a bunch of uh stuff where i i talk to people that have hung out with coach kyle for instance a guy that was on the madison boot camp with coach kyle sitting that said no polls he got fucking crushed he said that his game was very weak and he went into a lot of details on that and i covered that in another video which you must not have seen i showed all the text messages i showed the the voice notes all that stuff so 120 if putting things in perspective uh, I hit 100 June 2012. I was around 130 October 2012. That's 10 years ago. Okay. And the amount of breadth and depth of experience of someone like myself versus Kyle, it's a joke. Okay. Kyle has more subs, but that doesn't mean shit. Kyle said to me when he told me his lay count was 120, he's like, too bad uh, skill level doesn't translate into subs or you'd have way more. So I can, I have no problem breaking down his infield. I can make a, a note to do that or alex if you can write that down oh uh, we can i can't while i'm moderating but we can go back All right, I'll, I'll make my own notes sure yeah. I'll, I'll do an infield breakdown of that. and i appreciate you being respectful of it. again this isn't meant to be some fucking like you know super uh ro you know rosy colored thing that's all pc i just don't want to sit here and have people fucking sling around slander nonsense so yeah, okay that's pretty much all I have. Okay, thank you very much for having me on. And if you could like critique and field in the future of coaches you don't think they're good, that would be like better for the audience in general. I agree with sure. that. Yeah, I mean like the Todd one, you know, I, I had had a bunch of stuff to say about Todd before I went over the infield. And then once I did that infield breakdown, it was pretty obvious to everybody how terrible he was. Uh, okay, sure. Okay, Do you have anyone it. else you want me to critique besides Coach Kyle's infield? Um. Yeah, leave that up to the chat. Maybe they could type and you can get some ideas from that. Yeah, let us but, know in the chat. Uh, who else? In, who else all right. Thanks, Alex. Everything? All right. Cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cool. All right. Good first start. All right. So next we're going to bring on uh, Undead Chronic. 
Uh, guys, so in the chat again, like the only like lo- the rules are actually quite simple. Just don't spam. Like whatever you have to say, just say it once, maybe twice. I've seen some people who are saying the same message like ten times. So we have to put you in timeout because that just derails the chat. So just don't spam. It's not a big ask. All right, so let's bring on Undead Chronic. Okay, what's up, dude? What's up, guys? John, yeah. I liked your um, you did an expose of Fresh and Lubed, I think half a year ago. I did enjoy that. I was the first, yeah, I was the first one to call them out because at my level, when I talk like this, people think it's arrogance, but I'm really just saying that I devoted almost all my free time in the past 15 years to this obsessively. Um, that, that's not to say I didn't do a lot of other shit because that's a big criticism. People think I didn't do anything else. I also did tons of other stuff, but um, I can tell really quickly when a guy doesn't know what he's talking about. When those mm-hmm. guys came on the scene, it was very obvious. Plus, Myron had reached out for coaching. So, yeah, I, I was... <laughs> Two months after they were on the scene, I was calling them out, and Adam Preach came five months later. Okay, okay. Well, I have a list of uh, uh, topics or disagreements I have, and they're quite okay. different. I'm not going to come in here and get into the weeds of the the coaching of the game because, to be quite frank, I, I think you guys – and I say you guys, pickup artists are really just um, exploiting young, vulnerable men, right? Okay. But let's get. Uh, I want to get about the doxing. Do you want to talk about that first? Why do you think that? Well, how much do you charge for your courses? Um, for the most expensive one, we we don't really talk about that publicly because okay. we don't want to scare guys off. But it's not <laughs> cheap. Okay. Well, just like a couple thousand. Like, what's the hourly rate? Would you say a couple hundred bucks, thousand bucks? For one-on-one coaching, right now, I charge a thousand bucks an hour. Yeah. Okay. So. Just off of that, your services are twice as valuable as a as a thoracic surgeon. I think. So someone, I mean, so this, someone this is going to go in. Go on. Well, hold on. Before we before we put a, a sign of value to how much my services are worth, we have it's a qualitative question. What is it worth mm-hmm. to you to be able to have a high probability of getting any stranger you meet, either online or in real life, for for decades, for the rest of your life? I don't think you can put a price on that. I think my services are incredibly underpriced. So, but you put a price on it. If it's a thousand dollars an hour, you're you're getting paid twice the amount it takes a surgeon to go in and save someone's life. Yep. Okay. But um, I, I kind of want to talk no, about. I don't the think I don't think that's I don't think that's a good argument. It's apples. Well, it, it's it's not an argument. It's a fact. Someone's okay, going to go in and open their chest. One at a time. One at a time, please. Okay. Yeah, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. Or go ahead, Undead Chronic, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, that's that's a fact. You're charging twice the rate it takes someone to open someone's chest up and revitalize okay. their heart. Let me respond. Um, therefore, anything that costs more than $500 an hour is worthless because saving someone's life will trump it. Oh, and no, so it's not It's not worthless. I wouldn't say it's worthless. Well, I no, think I don't, it's we don't need to say it's worthless, but anything that – uh, is charged more than five hundred dollars an hour is unreasonable, or what? Or what, what, what I'm not. Oh, you know, I, it's not unreasonable. It depends on what you're, you're making getting. a point. What's the point? The point is you're not, not worth a thousand dollars an hour. I, I don't think you're worth a thousand dollars an hour. That's my point. Or at least admit okay. that you think you're worth twice it takes a surgeon's pay. I mean, if you if if you think me, you're worth me, twice a surgeon, me, man, not, I want to hear it. To me, it's not relevant. If I if oh, okay. I went to Andrew Tate and I said, "Why are you buying a Bugatti Sharon?" You could be, uh, we could be saving lots of lives, lives with surgeon, you know, surgeons saving people is a car more worth more than a life. It's a well, bad buying, a, buying a product is different than buying a service. We're talking hourly rate here. So like, you're not going to buy a surgeon. Okay. As opposed to like buying a let's car. Assume, let's assume I get a guy to be able to build up his dream rotation mm-hmm. within the first month. And then he can do that again for the rest of his life no matter where he is, no matter what city he's in, to a lot of guys, that would be worth $1,000 an hour on a okay. lifetime. You're thinking of it as a lifetime investment to, to say mm. surgeons save lives for $500. It's, it's, again, it's apples and oranges. You know, what does that have to do with anything? Well, you know, a surgeon saves your life. You get to live the rest of your life. But let's move on to the next topic. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I think that was, was a good point. You said if, if you think you're some guy pays for $5,000 and you teach him to be some massive pussy slayer and you can use it the rest of his life. That's a we, little bit better. We could make a list of all services that cost more than $500 an hour and say they're all less important than surgery. I, that would I'd be say it's true, less important. But that doesn't mean anything. There's still tons of things people want to do besides 
have their life, you know, have their it's lives. Like it's, it's kind of a cheap argument, in my opinion. I, it, it's not cheap because if you can find a service that's worth eight, nine hundred dollars an hour, the market's determining it's worth more than an hour of a surgeon's time. I'm just saying that with your value okay. assessment, well, I could, you think you're worth I could make twice the argument. I can make the argument that it's incredibly important to man to men's fundamental happiness and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And the fact that there's, you know, lives being saved at some hourly rate, again, does not, does not, there's a logic. I could write this out in a proof. I'll make a note to do that too. There's, there's, there's a logical mm -hmm. error you're making here. Okay. Why well, pick up advice? Is that logic, advice nothing, nothing should ever be spent, nobody should ever spend money on something more than a, a surgery should cost, which doesn't make any sense. Okay. Well, the next point I want to bring up is I heard you doxed waff, uh, wheat waffles. Is that is that true? I've, I've heard it, but I don't want to ascertain. It depends it. on how you define dox. Did I you leak his name? Guys, one at a time. One at a time. Come on. Let's do it one time. All right. So, John, I believe you were answering the question. So, I'll just. Uh, I showed his face and his name. Okay. That's doxing. No, it's not. The, the definitions, when you look at them, it's you're giving someone's address, you're giving their personal data and so that you can uh, you can find his, his name on facebook in his picture and that's do you why think, i showed it do you think that someone's face and full name on the internet can be more easily doxxed especially if they're trying to stay anonymous do i think i didn't understand the question did you give wheat waffles enemies a lead to where if they wanted to dox him or call up his work they could get him canceled yeah and i think people should do that do you think wheat waffles should be canceled? Why is that? Because I've talked to countless men that have become suicidal, depressed, broken over a bunch of black pill myths. And I wanted to show the world that that's a 19 year old pizza delivery man in England who's a little kid still. He can't even drink a beer legally in the US. Mm. And people don't need to be worshiping him as this almighty. I'm going to tell you if you're going to have options with, with the other sex. And there's tons of guys that have completely given up. And there's also a man who borrowed the name Waffles and went and killed a bunch of people in England. Now, it's not for sure that that is the reason why, but he was a huge Wheat Waffles fan and he put the name Waffles in his name. And I did a lot of research there and had help, had people help me do research. And he didn't care at all about his looks until he got on the Black Pill forums and they made him miserable and eventually turned violent. And I'm out there for a good cause. This wasn't meant to be a revenge because he called me a three. Uh, to be honest, even the downgrade to a two, he's disproving his own ideology because I have tons of proof, and Alex has seen tons of it, uh, of banging model level girls for over a decade. So if I'm a three or a two, how is that possible? How is I'll it possible? Comment, since my name was brought up, so let, me just, let me just kind of comment. Uh, so uh, give a little backstory. I've hung out with John three or four times. We've traveled together. I have seen, uh, you know, obviously I can't vouch for all of John's lay count, but I have seen him bang pretty hot girls like uh, firsthand. So I can vouch for that. So again, I'm going to stay very ambiguous in this chat because I don't want to like- And lots. Have my the time, time influence. Time but I have seen John bang chicks, uh, yes. But not like- Yeah, you've been part of group chats where, I, where I've sent every close. Yeah, I have, I have been part of those years. All right, anyway, that's just one comment on that. All so, right. so in your mind, it's acceptable to- allow the feminist left to destroy a teenager because you yes. disagree with him philosoph philosophically correct okay that's quite informative so should every black pillar get doxxed um i don't know i think it depends on how much harm they're doing the ones with big platforms yes okay so what other groups of people like should i get doxxed no. Or should like red pillars get dot? Like, is it is it just the black pill, or are there other groups that you want to be able to dox? And I know I'm using a term you disagree with, but it's just easier to use the same term. Who do you think people thought Wee Waffles was before I showed who he was? They thought he had a lot of authority. They thought he had a lot of life experience. They thought he had some kind of qualifications. Did they not? Well, I don't know. I don't really I don't really follow his channel. I just heard you dox a 19 year old kid. And I find that reprehensible. Okay. Well, this 19 year old kid is turning out probably hundreds of thousands at least. Okay. If not millions, because based on the view counts on his videos, turning them off completely from the opposite sex, because they're told, being told to give up because they don't look like a Chad or a model. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about, you know, showing his Facebook profile at that point. 
Okay, if he takes objection to that, he can try and sue me or something like that. But I don't make any apology about that. Okay. So do you kind of hold him responsible for the his wheat fan that ended up uh, Minecrafting some people? I do, yes. That's my okay. my opinion that he was connected, but I don't know that for a fact. And but I think okay. it's likely given the name that given the fact that the guy that shot people used waffles in his name and also was a huge fan of wheat waffles. So I might be um, getting the quote wrong, but I think you did a phone call with the Daily Mail where you said you were trying to get I never did a phone call with the Daily Mail. You didn't? Okay. That's good. I did with I did with the Daily Beast. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Daily beast, daily, whatever. They're all the same kind of trash tracks to me, but I think in it, you said you want to get um, what you want, or that's not, that's not a good quote, like sexual access, whatever it is using the least amount of force possible. So if one of your supporters ended Wait, up, uh, that's, I don't, I didn't say that you're going to have to give me the exact quote. I didn't say anything like that. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just make it easier. If one of your supporters ended up graping some girls because they were not taking no as no, would you hold yourself responsible for that? So graving, great. I, I use grape instead of the uh, hard R to avoid strikes oh, on channels. Okay. Yes, yeah, you, you can use it on my channel. I use it all the time. Oh, okay, okay. So if so, would, would I feel responsible? Yeah. No. Why is that? I don't ever push, or I don't ever teach at all to do anything that's non-consensual, or to even be pushy or aggressive. I actually say the opposite. I tell guys to back off. It, it, it does, a lot of guys think they need to do or die clothes every okay. day, and I tell them if the girl isn't down, just back off and just chill. And that because it's basically a loser's proposition. Either they're going to be very pushy and aggressive, and mm -hmm. the girl's going to be very comfortable and leave, or she's going to hook up and do something she didn't want to do, and she's going to feel like shit about it and not see them again anyways, or it could lead to other problems. So I'm always very clear about that. I'm not a coach that says go balls to the wall and kick them out if they won't bang. Mm. Okay, but, just. And I have a, a you know a disclaimer on my website for those exact cases that if someone were to go you know under the umbrella of game and do something uh, non consensual with a girl, I mean that that has nothing to do with me or anybody else unless I was actively teaching that stuff. So, do you know if Wheat Waffles was teaching men to murder? No, but he was okay. teaching men to hate themselves and feel like shit and feel like they had no option. And it was a direct result of his ideology. It okay. looks like. So just to clear it up, you, anytime, cause I always see no means yes. Yes means no, no is no to you. Right. Of course. Okay. Yeah. That might've, you know, might've been using some other things, but I have a, another question. And, um, I, I honestly, I want this to be false. I, I really, <laughs> It won't be false, but did you spend any time with a quote Vegas pussy massacre crew unquote? Yes, I, that, <laughs> was, a, that wait, was a nickname. Wait. When okay. I moved to Vegas, I was hanging out with a dude named Manhor, who was a, a, big, <laughs> a big name at the time. That was okay. a name on the for, that was a name on the forums. He oh, said okay. he, he messaged me when I was living in Philadelphia, and it was around the time I got fired from IBM and mm -hmm. for basically coming in late all the time. And he no. said, um, I think you're the, the best guy I've seen of this stuff. I want you to come live with me in Vegas. So I moved to Vegas and him and I were roommates and he was working for RSD, like behind the scenes as a coach. Mm -hmm. And we had a couple other advanced guys that we all hung out with. And actually I coined that term. Uh, so what you named the crew, the Vegas pussy massacre crew. It was just like a, a funny thing on the phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you guys didn't have shirts or anything? No. Oh, I mean, kind of like it's, do you feel like that's a kind of cringy name today? Like, would you wear a shirt with that on it? No, again, this wasn't a formal title of any group. It was okay. just us repping our skills on the forum and, and putting a, you know. Oh, I'm like just talking about like the name in general. Word. Like, do you feel like that's kind of a hilarious kind of cringe filled name or no? I don't think it's cringe. No, it is. Hilarious. Okay, then, then I would it's definitely so say. Uh, I would definitely say own it and sell shirts because I find that shit hilarious, even from both sides. Support it. I made late count shirts from number 150 up to 500 until it ran out of room. I put fifth, uh, every 50, I made a new shirt mm -hmm. and had J Mall on the back with the stick figure amount of clothes. So, continuing on your Vegas days, are you still banned from the Vegas Strip? 
No, and I oh, you're not. <laughs> no, that was there was a lot of misreporting in those articles. Okay, so do you want to explain the situation then? Because I saw some Regarding, court document. I saw some court documents saying that you pled down from a kidnapping charge. Yep, there okay. was so so that was in the end of May of 2013, and the the abbreviated summarized version is I met a girl in Caesar's Palace. Mm -hmm. We went away from her friends to my car. She walked on casino camera footage, holding my hand, smiling and laughing, also passing a security desk of four officers within arm's reach. Mm -hmm. At no point did she try to leave, and that's backed up on camera. At no point did she say she wanted to leave, and you know, there's no signs whatsoever that she wanted to go. Okay. Now, we were in my car maybe five, ten minutes. She didn't try to leave. She didn't ask to leave, but she did tell me that she had a boyfriend, and like after we started doing some stuff, she was like, I have a boyfriend. My dad will never forgive me. She was super religious. And my dad will never forgive me. My friends will never forgive me. And her friends came to the car, okay, led by uh, Derek Moneyberg, okay, who's that's what he goes by now. At that time, he was RST Derek. It was just me and him out that night, okay? I'm not going to make any claims about him in that situation, but mm -hmm. he had basically called me and said, I'm coming to Vegas. Don't let anyone know that I'm in town. I'll explain later, which he never did. He approached that set. I pulled the girl to my car. She was, you know, she left the car within five to 10 minutes later. We never had sex. So there was no rape charge as people, you know, the feminists tried to turn it into a convicted rape situation. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah. That, I, they I put a kidnapping charge that. because the girl claimed she couldn't get out of the car. Mm -hmm. She claimed she was child locked in the car. And after I got out of the holding area, I went to my owner's manual in my car and looked up, do I even have child locks? Because I didn't set any child locks. And it turned out there's a manual mechanism that needs to be set with a key or a pen in the back seat, which means it would have had to have been premeditated, which is a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. He might have never been accused all, with all these women. No one's ever accused me of anything besides this incident. And she claimed she couldn't get out of the car. So I called up OnStar and I said, can you prove that this child lock was never moved from factory position. And they said no, because it's a manual mechanism. And uh, the judge said, this is one of the most ridiculous cases I've ever seen, because again, she's on the casino camera footage, holding my hand, smiling, laughing, not stopping at security desk, not alerting the security desk. They were within arm's reach. And my lawyer in the preliminary hearing, which is available online, the transcript, he said, did you have the occasion to let security know that you're being kidnapped or otherwise bothered? She said, no, I did not. I chose to remain calm. So this was like her little secret the whole time that she was being supposedly kidnapped, which mm -hmm. is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so since it was a felony charge, it was hard to just get it dismissed. But I ended up pleading to a no contest, which means no, no guilt admission, misdemeanor disorderly conduct. So I took and that's been sealed off my record after two years. So. Mm -hmm. Misdemeanor disorderly conduct, it's the lowest level misdemeanor, and it's a no contest plea pursuant to the Alfred decision, meaning I didn't admit any guilt because I didn't do shit wrong. And so I couldn't said, counter to the girl because I took a plea. Mm -hmm. So quick question about um, the footage. I read that you only provided stills. Did you provide a video or was it just stills? Um, I had a video on my channel where I walked through all the arrest information and we have the video i could i could play that here i'll make I, I'm, I'm just saying like if the video shows that you weren't being forceful at all i would i would definitely say that's what you should use instead of stills okay but i mean we showed her walking past the security desk we showed her walking just well, the pictures of it pictures of yeah. it she, she walked right. past endless people in the casino and she never she testified that she thinks she saw four people there was like 60 or something like that mm. it was all nonsense and then the witnesses testimonies all contradicted each other the alleged victim somehow did not remember her best friend from childhood's last name <laughs> and a bunch of other fun little details that make zero sense so but that's yeah. all we'll, we'll go into on that so you had to they made you take impulse control courses right yep how, did the, how does that take, go? Like, what, what is that? Like, what was it? Someone I had telling to do you online impulse. I had to do online impulse control training, something like 80 hours of community service, which I did through my friend's startup uh, with, with 
uh, social work type stuff. And then basically, mm-hmm. um, I, I wasn't allowed on the Vegas strip for one year, but I wasn't oh, just a year. Okay. I wasn't living there anymore. Anyways, I was living in San Diego. Mm-hmm. So do you think that she could have calmly walked to your car, consent, consent, consent? Maybe she starts blowing you. And then you say, I want to put it in your butt. She didn't do that either, you. but well, I'm theoretically speaking, right? But do I think do I think no, no, that's I'm saying a like, possibility hypothetically or or what? I'm saying like she could have been consenting all the way to the car. Yeah, your you know, your point is that, that, that yeah, freaked her out, have, and then she's like, "I want to." Yeah. yeah, we only have footage actually through to us going on out into the parking garage. There was no mm, footage okay. from within my car, obviously. Um, and yeah, that's that's. But keep in mind here. Um, luckily, this happened in Vegas of all places because normally there would be zero footage of any of this. Okay, mm-hmm. But all the footage was on my side, which is why I wanted to sue the state of Nevada for even bringing that charge on me in the first place, because okay. everything pointed on my side. And I provided all that to the feminist reporters, and they didn't include anything on my side because they had an agenda and a narrative. Did you, end up, did you end up suing them? I couldn't because I took a plea. Is what I oh, I so the feminists really did a, a hard knock on you during this time, right? The feminists... Well, so what happened was this was my own private business and it was a bunch of nonsense anyways. But then RSD told a feminist reporter around the time of the Julian scandal, when they were talking to RSD, they told the feminist reporter about this particular situation. And the feminist reporter put out two articles. The first one said, school shooters and psychopaths hiding on pickup artist websites. They put, here's a guy that shot up a school and killed himself. Here's a guy that was charged with alleged kidnapping. And here's a guy that shot up a school and killed himself. These three people are the same because they posted on RST Nation. Mm. Let then, me comment on something real quick. So uh, the chat is getting really bored of this topic. They say it's old news. I'm not saying we have to change it, but I'm just letting you guys well, know. Well, it's good for people to hear the story, I guess. We can wrap, wrap the story. The second article, she basically implied that, there, that that was a rape situation and that I was convicted. So mm. I always have made the point over the years that I've never been accused or charged with rape. And in that situation, there was no sex in the case. Doesn't make sense. So you feel like the feminists have really uh, been a thorn in your side over the past decade? I feel that they uh, defamed me because they made people walk away from those articles thinking I was on the level of a school shooter and that I was a convicted rapist. And I spoke to defamation attorneys to sue the Daily Beast. And, you know, it's tough going up against a big publisher mm-hmm. and she and she used alleged and a lot of stuff but at the end of the day it's about what people take away from the articles which is inaccurate nonsense to fit her narrative so so do you, do you feel like what the feminist did to you was fair or just is this leading into what i agree about them going after wheat waffles pretty much i mean if you don't think if you if you're cool with this I happening to you different things. i was falsely accused of a situation and it never went to trial and I wasn't convicted, the courts determined that I didn't do anything wrong. Well, the feminists don't like pickup artists. Correct. The same way they don't like black pillars or any kind of pillars. So what they'll do against you, they'll do against him. But you're okay because- okay, but he, He's inflicting, look at, look at, okay, I'm not like a huge ethics guy. I'll make that clear. But there's like Immanuel Kant said that, was it Kant? Who the fuck? One of the ethicists said that I don't know. John Stuart Mill, maybe uh, somebody said that in actions, ethics is based on how much some total, uh, you know, either pleasure or pain it causes. Okay. And I think someone like Wee Waffles is causing massive amounts of pain on, a, on a, a level that no one can even calculate how bad it is. Okay. So I guess it just means you don't care the methods. You just care about the outcome. Not in all cases. It's it's situation dependent. Well, with, with, with wheat waffles, like you don't like the feminists, you don't like the slander, but the outcome is wheat waffles, in your opinion, um, not corrupting young men is, is a good thing. So it, it's okay. Yes. Okay. No, that's, that's an age old philosophical question. Um, so if someone- nobody stands up, nobody stands up to a lot of these guys. I'm the only fucking guy standing up to pretty much everyone. And I tell you, I lose hundreds of thousands of dollars in my business. Like my, my lawsuit with Modern Life Dating, he caused, we document, he caught, he literally caused hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage. How do you, and, is this wheat waffles you're talking about? 
No, this was a guy in Modern Life dating last year that I that I have an active okay. lawsuit against. So how did he how did he cost you all this money? Is he another is he another would you consider you guys you guys are pickup artists, right? Or pickup coaches? Is that you classify yourself as that? I call myself yes. Okay, so is dating coach, but you, but you can't lump us in the same category. Me and Alex give practical, straightforward advice. We actually get really, really good results consistently for our clients. Then there, and we show tons of proof. Then there's a lot of the oh, rest okay. of the industry that shows no proof and doesn't get guys results and doesn't okay. know what they're talking but, about. But still, it's just like it. so. MLD is also like a pickup artist, dating coach kind of guy. Yeah, right? he's he's like in the umbrella of the red pill space. Okay, so how did he cost you all this money? He bought, I had a product called Corona Pickup. He Oops. bought that with his own email address, modernlifedating at gmail.com. And then he refunded it about a week later. And then he came out with a product called Pandemic Pickup. And I had someone look through it and he copied a lot of innovations that I came up with personally that had never been spoken about online. Okay. And I made a video calling him out for stealing my product. And I also did research into his other products and he had copied his whole body language mastery product off of this guy, Player Supreme. He had taken stuff from Alex's product and he did this in a whole bunch of places. And I called all that out. He didn't like that. He tried to fight back with slander. He tried to say, I fled the US because of a prostitution scandal that all my <laughs> thousands of pictures and hundreds of hours of infield are fake. They're all hookers. Uh, again, none of this was substantiated with any evidence except for a fake screenshot that came from an ex coach of mine who was just trying to make me look bad. And that was debunked by CoffeeZilla. It's a long story and there's an ongoing uh, thing about it legally, but at the end of the day, he made an uh, incredible amount of false statements of fact, even after being sent a cease and desist and a letter of intent to sue, which is going to look very bad for the courts. And he's even continued slandering me after, after while the lawsuit is ongoing. So it's obviously so is, the, is the money you lost like people canceling courses? Yep, we have a whole bunch of documentation of people signing up and then going and googling and then oh we found this guy's claims and now we're not coming onto the program but those claims okay. were false yeah so for me if i were to channel your philosophy into you know at least you know the methods don't matter it's just the means if i could stop my fingers and have the feminist well, i never said i never well, said that i mean yeah we well, can't for, make broad generalizations it's pretty situation dependent in the case of you waffle so your value like one, one, one at a time one at a time go Sorry, ahead go ahead Oh, so so your philosophical values change on the situation. Yes. Okay. Go on. What are you saying? In the Wee Waffles example, all I really did, you know, with all despite all these like doxing, 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 I showed his pro Facebook profile with his picture and his name. That's the extent of it. Um, I didn't, you know, list any personal private stuff uh, other than where he went to school, which is how I found him, and. I think that he needs to be stopped because he's, like I said, he's causing a lot of pain and suffering in men and including something that could have been caused by him, which was a school, which was a shooting. Okay. So if I think that you're causing a lot of financial pain to men and I came up with some way to get the feminists to destroy you, would you feel like I was being unethical? You, you know, if we were to remove our opinions about it and we were to look at things objectively, um, it, when you say financial pain, again, we can say the surgeon is ca causing financial pain. Yeah, but, you know, he's actually causing life if he saves a person. Okay, we'll use any other example. Anything that costs money, we can say is costing financial pain. It doesn't speak to the benefit of the service. Okay, but I'm saying my opinion is well, we don't have to argue the opinion that you're causing some kind of pain to men. So well, how if I use, let's move past that. If I use the feminists against you in well, a way it's very that critical you, to the point. I need to know what pain I'm causing so that we can look well, at it. I think, I think there's a whole lot of men that are thinking you got the magic sauce when they really just need to go to the gym. That's not enough. I, 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 I completely disagree. I think a thousand dollars of the gym membership and, dedication and discipline we'll see much more who's, results than paying for coaching this? Kids class who's been coaching this for over 10 years you or me how many guys have you been exposed to that are trying to solve this i've been exposed to tens of thousands i've had lots well, that's of your, guys that's your that's your whole job right your job is to yes. help guys get cheap i have food. a lot of data this isn't my opinion that just going to the gym is not enough that's facts based on endless data
what's do you have like any sources that you can just off the top of your head i get guys that are in very good shape all the time that okay. fucked up their texting that fucked up their cold approach that sit for three hours on a date and they don't know how to sexualize or get the girl back home that gets the girl back home and they don't know what to do there to make the hookup go down so There's it's personal interactions strategic and tactical elements that go into the skill game that simply getting strong will not fix I will com I will comment on this real quick. So I've also had uh, just from my personal experience multiple coaching clients of dudes who were jacked, like way more jacked than me, but they were struggling. So I've personally experienced that. Also, I will say one more thing. Uh, this is quickly in John's defense. John does advocate going to the gym, so he doesn't say like just yeah. Like, it's not one or the other. It's not the gym doesn't just like, matter. My, my, my two cents on that, but I'll shut up. Now. I would never say the gym doesn't matter. It's not. It's just not the be all end all. It's a sexual market value upgrade that is going to give you an advantage compared to having a weak physique. But that I look at it more as icing on the cake from all the data that I have rather than something that's going to carry the person all on its own. So your data suffers from selection bias because dudes that go to the gym and are successful aren't going to buy your courses. You're the only people that come to you are dudes with problems with women. That's only people without problems. They don't come to you. So all your data you is the problems. guys who are desperate for pussy. That's who you're talking about. And no, it's, it's not true because I get tons of clients that are already getting girls. Most guys, what's not, like what's, even, you know, go on. Most guys, including myself, would always like to get better quality. I get tons of hot girls. Like it's usually above a nine here in Brazil. This is a lot of nines everywhere, but I, everyone always wants to do better. So I get guys even that have even been with 300 girls or 200 girls it's not necessarily that they're desperate and they're not getting shit. It's they want tactical and strategic upgrades that are going to improve the different levels of the funnel so that they can move more phone numbers to dates. They can move more dates to closes, more closes to rotation. And without knowing all the inner workings of how that works, they're going to make a lot of errors and that's going to lead to a lot less results. So would you say that your typical customer, his number one goal in life is to get as much pussy as possible? No. Okay, what's your number one goal in life? Mine or my customers? No, yours, yours. I'm I'm a huge proponent of Frederick Nietzsche's Ubermensch concept. So I like to strive to be, uh, you know, doing whatever I feel is going to accomplish goals I have. Um, okay. I'm very, I, I just started a health and longevity company on the side. Um, I do tons of other shit. Guys think that because there's a huge lake count that I must not do anything else or I must be lonely. Over the past 10 years, I've done tons of other awesome shit on the side. Like currently I do boxing, I do Muay Thai, I go to the gym, we go to parties, we, we hang out with all kinds of threesome girls. We have three dogs in the house. I've been with my main girlfriend for over two years. Mm. You know, we love each other. We travel. We, we do all kinds of shit. There's there's tons of stuff we're doing that has nothing to do with game. And it doesn't. So what are people? What's a misconception is that it's like the only focus. Well, you know, on your channel, it's it's a business. That's the focus of the channel, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what are some of your big goals? Like, what are some of the top three goals of your life? Because to me, and this isn't like a I'm talking bad on your particular game. To me, men who spend this much time, effort and money on getting with cheap low quality woman it's what it's kind of it sad it's kind of sad to me well i mean if they're gonna find some random dude and give up the pussy they're a low quality woman so any girl that sleeps with a guy that's not in a relationship is a low quality woman yeah that what are they yeah, gonna do for me besides give me a, a a hole to zinc in not much there's tons of other things that are awesome about chicks besides sex or a hole to what did you say zing in Zinc in. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between there's multiple types it of chicks. Like you have a, a poor opinion of women. How many women have you been? Uh, I, have, I have a poor opinion of women that sleep with you. All right. Hang on. We, we have a rule. No personal attacks. So that's, that's not a personal attack. I said, if they meet random dudes and sleep no, that's with them. Fine, no say. Yeah, okay. Like, how many girls have you been with? Let me just quickly comment on this topic real quick. So uh, the one thing I will say, me and my girlfriend, who is awesome, uh, I banged her on the second night and she has added a lot to my life. So I, well, from my experience, say that I disagree with the argument that any chick who you bang outside of a relationship is low quality. My experience had contradicts that. All right. Anyway, go ahead. So okay. how many girls have you been with? I'd like to know about your experience. Uh, 
probably, I don't know. I don't have a ledger. It's in my business. Approximately. Uh, I don't want to say a hundred because it could be under a hundred, like in the eighties. Okay. But well, you don't respect any of them if they banged you. What are the conditions where you, where you'd be able to respect them? Well, I think it just, I think it comes out to what do you want from a woman? So Alex, let me ask you a question. Are you going to, do you have any kind of thoughts or inklings of marrying the woman that you're with right now? I don't want to marry anyone. That's, that's good. That's good. So do either of you guys want children or no? I'm uh, undecided. Yeah, I'm undecided. Okay. okay. Are you guys but like, I, uh, I like say, go on. I can tell you what I look for in a woman. Yeah. Tell me. In a main rotation girl or, you know, even a formal girlfriend where it's one way open for me, I want her to be above a nine in looks. I want her to be very smart. The girl, the main girl I'm seeing in Brazil is a civil engineer. She's hyper analytical like myself. I want them to come from a good family and have a good moral value system. I want them to have ambitions. I want them to be fun. I don't want them to be uh, adding too much negativity in my life in any way or any kind of drama. Um, I want them to have a good heart where they put others before themselves, um, mm. where they encourage me to be a better person. There's a very long list and I'm very strict about it for the main one, especially. So, so explain your turb rotation. That's not your girlfriend. That's like the girls you just sleep around with. Yep. Yeah. The rotation you... is, is basically like the side girls. There's less of an emotional connection. It, it's like a hierarchy so right now. I have 14 on the side. I'm the closest by far with the number one girl. Number two and three, we have emotional connection. It's not, I have emotional connection with a lot of them. But as you get towards like the last maybe three or four or whatever, it's mostly just sex, surface level jokes. And okay. This and, that. and it's always changing. I can bring in new girls that I meet that are cool. I can, you know, kick out old girls that are I've gotten bored of or that are getting annoying or that, you know, for whatever reason. So why do you care if they have morals or a good heart if you're just there to bang them? I would say I'd rather have good glutes on a girl. Or, you I, know, I never like, set up just there to bang them. Oh, so they're like pseudo relationships. What's the deal with that? Cause I hear See, rotation. I think like a bunch of hookups. You seem to be making the point that, that women are only good for banging. Well, the ones that are sleeping around. Yeah. What are they going to add to my life? I'm spending time and money on them. If I just want sex, I'll go get sex. You can do all there's okay. So I'll make the point that you can enjoy a lot of other activities with a woman and experiences other than sex. Would you agree with that? Do you want to like list some of them, like going on a nice date to the beach, that kind of thing? Literally anything you would do in life with the company of, of an attractive, cool chick is going to enhance the experience dramatically apart from why, any sex. Why do you think that is? Because we're biologically hardwired to be attracted to hot, cool chicks. Are you attracted to hot, cool chicks, regardless of your judgment on them? Yeah. And why do you think that is? Why, why do you think you're attracted to women, biologically speaking? Because evolution programmed us that way. Because you want to bang them. But I, like I said, I derive a bunch of fulfillment and other things besides banging them. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just saying that that fulfillment is influenced by a biological drive to bang them. So there's like, um, okay. So another question here. Have well, you ever bought? Just closing the thought. Let's make one last closing thought on that. Sure. I mean, I, to be honest, it's I feel a little bad for you if you think that women are just there for banging, and I think you should try to get to know them on a deeper level because there's all kinds of awesome shit you can experience with a woman besides banging. Well, I mean, again, the women that you put on your rotation are worth nothing more than banging. Why is that? Oh, well, because I'm interested in something very different than you guys. I'm interested in building a strong family. And the women who sleep around like that, they are irrecoverably broken. They can't build strong families. Okay. I mean, I have three dogs with my current okay. chick here. And they act like fucking, I've never had kids, but they, it feels like taking care of kids. And we have yeah. like that nice bond, like family bond with the fucking dogs and each other. And we're there for each other through hard times and stuff like that. That's that's nothing oh. to do with sex. Oh, dogs are great. But do you think a dog is going to fulfill you like a son? No. But okay. again, while we're debating, you know, the merits of having a family, I'm just talking about on principle, I guess, like a priori, women have far more worth than just a bang. 
yeah, if she submits as a virgin in marriage, she's worth a whole lot to me. And yeah, I will say just hanging out, hanging out with a chick and you're dating her. It's fun to hang out with her, but you got 15 on your rotation. I'd feel like you're, you know, you're spreading your time kind of thin there. I don't see them all that often. I see each okay. one about once a week, sometimes a week and a half. And the, the high ranked ones I see more often. And you're absolutely certain they're not banging anybody else. Uh, there's no way to be absolutely certain about that. There you it's go. A, yeah. Epistemolog epistemological question. Uh, that doesn't mean that they necessarily are. Mm -hmm. I give them a really good experience. I give them usually the best sex I've ever had. They think I'm a lot of fun. They think I'm cool, etc. And they're usually hitting me up all the time. And I tell them I don't want them seeing other people. But mm -hmm. do I know for sure if, if all of them are not? No, unless I had like, you know, trackers. Track <laughs> It put a bug in our pussy, <laughs> like breach, containment breach. But um, you said you've had sex with what? Last number I heard was 1,500. Is that accurate? 1,477. So getting close. You can throw a party at 1,500. We are. So do you wear protection every time? What's the deal with that? No. Okay. How often do you get SED tests? Usually about every three months. I've okay. caught uh, chlamydia about four times and nothing else. And it was treated in one week with a pill each time. And I did a video on STD risks and most uh, like basically, so everything's curable except for HIV and herpes. HIV is mostly in the gay community and people sharing needles. So it's mostly spread through raw unprotected anal sex, which I don't do. <laughs> and the odds of having, uh, or getting HIV even from someone that has it through vaginal sex is incredibly low. I have a video where I present all these statistics. You can also take something called PrEP, which prevents HIV. Um, oh, yeah, are you taking PrEP? Guys, one, one thing real quick. Uh, so just Undead Chronic. So we do got to get the next people on. So can we? Is are you cool with me, us giving you in like 10 minutes or something to make it? No, nah, that's fine. That's fine. Right, cool. Go ahead. So are you taking PrEP right now or no? No, but I'm actually looking into getting on it just to be more responsible. Even though the rest, the risks are incredibly low for a straight man, mm -hmm. um, it's still, I think, a, a responsible move. Okay, I mean, and I got a vasectomy, vasectomy in 2014. I've got oh, I've had three, three accidents uh, in in 2014 with pregnancies, and all three were abortions. And I I just didn't want to. I think I thought that was irresponsible, and I got a vasectomy. So if there's a chance you might want children, do you think it's irresponsible to keep on catching syphilis? Because that can make you infertile. I've never caught syphilis. Uh, chlamydia. Chlamydia can make you infertile too. I have sperm frozen in San Diego that I could have up to like eight kids from that I froze when I was 30 years old, currently okay. 38. And the sperm is more vital when you're younger. So if I ever want kids, I'll, I'll do it. Um, it's called the turkey baster method. It's also reversible the vasectomy most people don't know that mm. so have you ever bought an escort uh yes in amsterdam in amsterdam how was that experience i got scammed <laughs> basically oh. i went there with my best friend in 2006 and i was like "Fuck it let's try this before i got into formal game and i i figured you know i'm in the fucking red light district when in Rome, and I lost him too. He was fucking, he was all into weed and shit, and he fucking wandered off. And so I went to the red light district, and, and chicks were trying to like fucking grab my wallet for me and shit. And it, so it was a bad oh, experience. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. So what what degree did you have to go to IBM? I have a double bachelor's in computer science and philosophy with a minor in cognitive science. And I can show. I'm gonna. I made a note already. I'm gonna show all these degrees and my work uh, qualifications from the past. Um, and then I did a, a master's in human computer interaction, basically user mm -hmm. experience design, and a master's in philosophy of cognitive science. And then I took the okay. LSAT and got into a law program and I was going to go to law school, but then I got offered a job at Lockheed Martin. And I started there in February 2007 at 64 grand. And then they gave me the max raises up until four and a half years later when I left and I was up to 86 K. And then IBM offered me 125 to work from home. So I left as a contractor. I, I was a full-time employee 
for Lockheed, and my parents were very against that because Lockheed was more stable and the IBM was just like a nine month contract with the potential to renew. But I liked the big pay jump with being able to work from home. Okay. And then you said you got fired for showing up late. Were you partying all night or discoing or DJing? We had these meetings on Friday morning and I was going to this one event on Thursday night where I'd usually pull and bang and I would just miss the meetings a lot. And eventually they, they let me go over that. And once that happened, I moved to Vegas mm -hmm. and then I worked in the tech sector a few more times. I worked for a company called the DD technologies in Vegas, Indian company based out of Bangalore on <clears throat> like spa system interfaces. And then I worked for, that was only for a few months. They fired me because I was in Vegas going out every night. Um, I was getting like one to two hours of sleep and I was falling asleep in meetings while people were speaking to me involuntarily. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, in 2014, I worked for Sony PlayStation for two months and I got fired from there for coming in late and missing, you know, so just game uh, and then HP Hewlett Packard for uh, two months. And they fired me because of one of those feminist articles. Someone found mm -hmm. that. So, so just two more questions and then I'll, I'll, I'll bounce myself out of here. Um, would you consider yourself a sex addict? Potentially. Potentially. Have you ever kind of looked into that or you just don't care enough about it? I haven't uh, sought any kind of formal help. I, I kind of, I have an addictive personality in general. So mm. luckily I never got into any. That's good to drugs. know. Why is that? Oh, well, it's good to know for yourself. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah you, so, you, you won't end up getting addicted to huffing glue or some shit. Yeah, I mean, with alcohol, I started going pretty hard at it right when I started drinking my third year of college. I was raised in a very conservative uh, household. My parents are super Catholic. They both waited till marriage to have sex. And I think I had a lot of verbal abuse growing up, and I think that kind of gave me the drive to take this game to the level I took it to, combined with my analytical abilities in these other areas. Um, allowed me to optimize this game with the drive component, probably mm -hmm. for a, a need for external validation, if I'm being honest, just because of the traumatic verbally abusive childhood. But I'm very thankful for that, um, you know, in a weird way, because it's just the silver lining is I was able to take this game so far. Like George's St. Pierre, the top ranked UFC fighter, he was bullied a whole bunch as a child. If he wasn't bullied a whole bunch, he would never have became as great as he did. Okay. And so my last question, you kind of asked my lay count and I kind of, kind of tipped me off to something that I thought was interesting. I would probably classify you as a sex addict. Um, but what percentage of your respect for a man is how much pussy he gets? 80%, 90%. Like if I was a virgin is what I'm saying, not applicable to you. Or if I had sex with like 10,000 chicks, would you be like hitting me up for courses? What's the, what's the, what's the layout here? I like to establish a fact that John's voice does change based on the lay count of the person. That is a matter. <laughs> Alex, Alex noted, that was, a, that was an interesting observation. He noted that, that like the level of respect I carried in my voice. No, but I mean, you know, I, oh, don't no, know I, I, I didn't know the voice. I did, I was just wondering, you know, I had that question written down at the start. I'm like, well, well, the only, the only reason I asked you is because you said like women are only good for a whole and this and that. And, and I was well, like, like well, not all women, so not all women, just the women yeah. who sleep around like that. Yeah. They're, pretty much trash okay. to me. Yeah. What yeah, I say I mean, before I leave is that's kind of sex is pretty acceptable in the, in the modern day. Yeah. Well, what I'll say before I leave is the kind of women that on you that are on your rotation. Um, I advise my viewers to practice their stroke game on them. That's it. Nothing else. Okay. But you don't Not know worth any kind of investment. Hmm? You don't know what girls are on my rotation. Well, I know that they're having sex with you. So any that's, all, that that's all I need to know. Any of your rotation, like the hottest chick you got comes up to me. She's worth nothing more than the easy lay. But that's because me and you have different values. That's all. I'm not saying that I'm some turbo giga Chad that gets even better. You I'm think, just saying like, go on. You think anyone that uh, engages in casual sex it is low quality by default? Well, women, yes. Why not men? Because men who engage in casual sex, men aren't the ones getting divorced. It's 80% women. So I always get this like, well, should a man be a virgin too? I, I haven't seen the statistics on it. If, if I saw, if I saw like some, some survey showing that virgin men get divorced less, they probably do. 
I would probably prefer my daughter marry a virgin man. But the problem in the States, at least, is non-virgin women destroying their husbands in divorce courts. So I say, avoid them. Don't give them money. Don't commit to them. Like, like Alex said, his chick uh, slept him on the second date. My chick, according to her, again, I can't verify this, but I believe her, claims she usually waits five dates to sleep with a guy. And she also mm -hmm. said she doesn't go on a second date with a guy like 90% of the time. I tried to kiss her like 15, 20 minutes in on our first date. And she's like, I'm going to go. She was oh. like, I think this is going too fast. I think I should leave. And that's actually a good thing. I, I got it. I said, don't worry, we can slow down. But that's actually a good thing and a, and a good quality when looking for a girlfriend or main rotation girl. So like I said, I, I'm probably looking more for what you're looking for in my top three girls and the other girls. I don't really, you know, they're loyal to me as far as I know. And if I found out otherwise, I cut them off. But I would, you know, I would probably side more with I'm looking for girls with good morals and a good heart to be my main chicks that I get emotionally involved with. Well, they weren't. Speaking both of those girl, oh, both okay. come both girls girlfriends weren't virgins when they no, met you, that right? Way. That's way too great. Oh, we can ask this her. Is, I'll ask her myself. This is, my, this is my main chick in Brazil, and she is What's a civil name? engineer. What's her name? Liz. Liz. Hey, Liz, were you a virgin when you met John? No, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I consider you low quality. Sorry. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. That's nice words. Thank you. That's all right. Anyone, anyone that's not a virgin uh, when they be with a guy is low quality. Or no hymen, no diamond. Quality. That's what we say. It's I don't get it. It's high quality one. The girl with the virgin or yes, oh. only girls worth anything are girls that are virgins. Investments, yes. Mm -hmm. But Liz, yeah, you look banging. Yeah. I wouldn't mind taking you out and uh, filling you up to get past the room. Yo, come on, dude. Like let's let's again yeah, we're getting like personal shit. Like this is like I already get. So you have any closing thoughts? Yeah. Like there's no personal insults allowed. Anyway, I'm not personal. He is. A, that's a beautiful woman. I'm. I'm, yeah, I'm, can, I'm, 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 I'm just respectful to say someone's girlfriend. Oh, I would take you out and fill you up with my jizz. I mean, like, come on. Well, is that better than me saying you're just? That's disgusting. why we need to have these. That's why we need to have these debates live so we can see a fucking beat down on stream. Kick him out of here. Thanks, man. Bye, pussy. All right. Anyway. All right. Mm -hmm. So it was good for a while, and then again, disrespectful in the end. Uh, all right, guys. So we have well, obviously just to just to finish up, and I'm not gonna. You know, he can't debate back, but I. For all you viewers, if anyone thinks that the only women worth anything are virgins, you know, that's the argument being made. I think that's a dumb argument. Yeah, well, we'll comment on that. I think that's just extremely unrealistic. You're not going to get a chick nowadays who's a virgin that's impossible, nor do I think you would want to because sex is terrible. I thought plenty of virgins. And Liz, Liz hasn't been with many people at all. Now she's been with tons of girls after me, like 70 girls. But she, yeah. she was mostly being with guys in relationships, waiting five dates. That's pretty fucking conservative. In terms as, of a, as a side note, John, all the, the the chat is basically all on your side. They're all saying that was a low blow. So anyway, um, so guys, there's 400 people in the live stream. So can everyone just hit the like button? Let's get this video in the algorithm. Just everyone, please go over, hit that like button. It doesn't cost you anything. It's easy. Uh, hey, I, mm -hmm. That makes me feel bad that, that she had to fucking hear that because she shouldn't. She's a good chick. Yeah, I agree. That was like that was a super low blow. Like I don't know why he had to go down that route. I, the funny thing is, he didn't even think that was disrespectful. I think he legitimately was confused, like why uh, he was, uh, you know, like why that was fucked up. This thing to say. The thing uh, is, no high quality girl is ever going to want that dude. It's a fucking loser. But go ahead. All right. Anyway, so uh, anyway, so next we got Caduceus. Caduceus is someone I personally know. He's a chill guy, so he's. I'm pretty sure he's going to be chill. All right, let's bring him on. Yo, what's, what's up, up guys how you guys doing so caduceus yo so that's just uh just to kind of get you up to speed so uh we're doing no personal attacks and no uh trolling so for example last guy we had to kick because he made a pretty disrespectful remark so let's just not have that happen yeah okay that's fair yeah and john yeah. we actually we actually bet on md stream once so uh, it was where? a long time ago on uh MGTOW dictionary stream before oh okay wait before before we get into that does everybody smash the like button um, and also make sure you check out my channel, John Anthony Lifestyle. And I have a eight week mentorship at platinumdatingsystem.com. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of your videos, you emphasize the late count. What's the importance of the, the significance you see in there, like in terms of goals? I think that it's one of the best objective measures to judge a guy's experience and skill level in this game, given a bunch of other factors, his age 
where he was he in any easy mode cities um how often is he going out you know how many girls is he sleeping with on average per month or per year um but that you know if if we didn't look at something like a real statistic okay and then of course they have to be telling the truth but i've made extensive videos and, and showed endless proof um I, but I think like, you know, then it's just anyone saying, oh, I'm good at the game. I'm good at the game. I'm good at the game. But how do you measure anyone? It's like earnings in poker or a record mm -hmm. in, in UFC. Okay. Yeah, I definitely agree. You got to back it up, show your receipts. Or LeBron, you know, and, points per game. Like these other things people can see, these are real statistics. In this industry, it's fairly unregulated. And everyone, anyone with a webcam can go be a self-proclaimed expert. And lots of these coaches actually I've, I've found have, have not even been with 10 girls yet. So they don't, okay. Well, if you're if you're promoting a product where you can pick up, yeah, lay count, you can do that as a, a metric because they're saying that you can get any girl with this with this magic sauce. You got to be able to back that up. I just think of the guys that might come onto your channel. They hear you say this guy's got a low lay count. He's a loser. That kind of mindset. Uh, do you think that could maybe like warp a guy's perception and like your whole life's worth is on the lay count instead of like what you got going on in your life? Yeah, potentially, but a lot of that's meant to be um, a bit hyperbolic in the sense, and also just kind of showing from a pragmatic standpoint that uh, a guy that's a self-proclaimed coach should not have an objectively below average looking girlfriend or, you know, should not be in the single digit late count, for instance, because that means he doesn't know what he's doing. Okay, that's fair. Now on the idea of the the rotation, like what's your I, I I hate to go personal, but what's like your long term like personal goal with like women, or are you not sure yet? Like, do you want the family? Do you want like just people to hang out with? Um, I don't know about a family yet. I think there's a lot of huge downsides. Like kids would would make things very restrictive. Me and my chick want to be traveling the world a lot and, and doing all kinds of cool stuff, and kids would really put a damper on that but I'm not ruling it out completely. Um, I also think the uh, paradigms are going to radically shift in the very near future due to accelerating exponentially advancing uh, artificial intelligence and, and mm -hmm. nanotechnology and things of those. So I think traditional familial units are not going to be how they are now or how they were in the past. I think we're gonna be spending a lot of our time in virtual worlds. We're gonna be engaging in virtual sex and stuff like that. Um, but what was oh what was this what was the original point though or that I, I it was like your that. personal goals and you said that you like weren't entirely oh. sure and you and like well, you don't the, know the future the goals. end yeah the, like the means is like an end in itself i enjoy the game i enjoy meeting new hot chicks and banging them i enjoy seeing girls that i'm already seeing on rotation yeah and a, the purpose of a rotation is basically like it becomes like a conglomerate super girlfriend where um any one particular body type or personality type can become predictable and potentially boring. Whereas when you have a big rotation, you might have an intellectual nerdy girl, you might have a partier girl, you might have a girl that likes to, you know, smoke hookah and like, you know, she's like a little out there or whatever. And any of those girls on their own would be too, you know, you'd get, you'd get bored of it quick. And when they, when they all complement each other, and also body wise, some have a nice ass, some have nice tits, some have a super so, pretty face. So and, I'm just trying to, to distinguish uh, the difference between a, being a single man who has like a main and plays the field versus someone with a rotation. Is it that they all know about each other and are into it? Is that the difference between rotation and being single and just kind of playing the field and having your main like Liz is your main? So like, I don't get the formality, the need for formality here. Well, it's just a it's just a label to call girls that you're regularly banging that are not your girlfriend. So okay. the rotation is just like girls that I'm seeing on a regular basis. If I bang a girl for the first time, usually they are on rotation at that point if I like them a lot because they get really into me right away because I've perfected all the little things I'm doing. But um, it's it's not until I've already been seeing her on a regular basis that I would refer to her as being on my rotation. But it's basically just girls you're, you're banging on some kind of regular basis. Okay, so so if you're banging all these girls in the basis and you don't really see like a long term prospects of a family, why give Liz the label of a girlfriend? Just because she's the main the main one. We live together. Okay. So it's just a yeah. label. So you're effectively a single guy. Yeah, I mean well, the way we have it structured is it's one way open. So I still go hang out with new chicks. We hang out with a lot of chicks together too, but. 
um, she's not open to go see any guys. Okay. I'm, but you said that you can't really like enforce that, right? But you just lose the label. Um, yeah, no one can ever enforce that. N not even in a marriage. Yeah. And that's, and that's like a common issue I see like in the West, um, which is why marriage we probably agree is a bad choice in there. And yeah, about, let's go back to your idea about like Valtrex and prep and your STD take. What would you do if you caught an antibiotic resistant strain of one of those STDs? How, uh, how often is that happening? Um, I mean, there's their own strains. If you go to a place like Santa Barbara, sometimes people are getting uh, gonorrhea and an antibiotic resistant strain. And the so more, the, the more times what's people, the likelihood under, like, it's very low likelihood, of, but like fraction of a percent, it's a very low likelihood, but like, again, it's a very low likelihood. You'll get it in the first place and Why do you... better, better prophylaxis probably would be, uh, maybe like a little bit more self-control and using condoms is another way. Okay. Why do you cross the street when there's cars coming by? Well, I mean, I, I look both ways to make sure like I, I put protection. I make sure I'm vigilant. I'm doing everything I can. I don't necessarily see taking these drugs as the best prophylaxis, maybe having better screening and, and then uh, wrapping up would be a better advice to give than be like, oh, just, just hop on prep, Valtrex, you'll be covered. You'll just take Zithromax. Uh, to take uh, to get rid of the STDs, I just think that's what's, I, I'm what's kind of against that? that advice. Well, Why? like there's there's a chance they they need to know the full facts. Like it's already low chance that they're going to pick it up, but you're ignoring the fact that you could still get an antibiotic resistant strain. And uh, in terms of when you're using condoms versus so, other forms of contraception, there's going to be a 99 uh, percent likelihood you're going to stop it if you put it on properly so it's just kind of what you got to be get, you got to give people the full story before yeah it says a fraction of, of one percent um the antibiotic resistant cases um i mean condoms are condoms are not 100 percent either right? yeah yeah so, and usually and most of the error is due to people putting them on wrong or them breaking and shit like that condoms just make it feel way worse i can't get these girls pregnant because i have a uh, vasectomy and you know i mean isn't it a testament that i've never caught anything bad after almost 1500 girls um it's not i mean it's hey, not that's, possible, that's good that's great that, i mean you had some fortunate luck that's good right there um and what about the um hold on let me think of it again yeah i i was trying to say what about the side effects of these medications that you hop on like valtrex prep like what is racking up the lay count worth it? Um, I'm not intimately familiar with the side effects of those, but I do have friends that are on those and they don't complain about anything, but you know, it's like the cost of doing business basically. Um, I think Rouge V said about herpes, he said, if you can't handle a skin disease then this game isn't for you or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so do you think that, to be a part of that game, you have to kind of value female validation and societal validation of being with women um, high on high on your priority list to even go in to for things like the skin infections or the risk of uh, antibiotic resistant diseases or um, those sorts of side effects on prophylaxis for the entire game to be worth it. So you okay? So your question is since there's this incredibly tiny likelihood of getting an antibiotic resistant strain of an STD that you shouldn't try to date or have sex. Well, you just said that, Hey, it's a risk that not everyone's willing to take and they shouldn't be a part of the game trying to rack up the lay count. Well, the reason why I said crossing the street is because we do things all the time that have a chance of something going bad. I've, I've read a lot of science books and a rock statue uh, Richard Dawkins makes this point. He says a rock statue can actually move. Uh, it has the, the chances to do that. They're just very unlikely. So, and, you know, he uses the example of crossing a street and, you know, people do things like that where it could potentially, you know, fly in a plane and can crash. Um, okay. I yeah. Think yeah. I just... think, I think we can move on to the next one, but yeah, I think we, I think the kind of idea that I'm going to is I could see how that could be seen like kind of, redirecting a lot of your course just to increase your lay count 
Um, and with you calling guys losers, I think that indirectly sets the message that if your lay count is under a certain number, you're kind of a loser. And if I find that toxic, um, would that give someone a valid reason to cancel you? Because I think that's toxic for guys to think that. And you said that Wheat Waffles had a toxic ideology, which I agree, but I don't think he directly made that guy shoot those people. So like, why, why are you immune from the doxing uh, critique, but no one else is? Um, I would like, again, I'd probably the same answer I gave to the other guy. If we're looking at the overall pleasure versus pain that's being brought into this, um, men getting better with dating, it, it's, there's not really many downsides except, you know, more of their time or potentially like putting their heart out there. But, you know, they're, they're, it's, I've had, again, I've had 10 years worth of clients and it improves their lives tremendously across the board in almost all cases. Would you agree, Alex? Sorry, what was the question? I was looking at the chat. Uh, over your experience of coaching, has improving their dating skills almost universally improved their happiness and and life? I would say largely yes. Uh, vast majority of time, uh, it does improve their life and they are happier. Yeah. What, yeah, what would so, you say their I mean, goals? What would you say their goals are with women in general? Most. I can answer and you can give your input too, Alex, if you want. Um, most clients I've had want to have more options and they want to have better chances of getting any particular girl. And what they end up doing usually is going on a bunch of dates and then they find a girl they really connect with that they didn't have access to before because they didn't know how to go through the whole process properly. And then they end up a lot of times becoming more serious with that girl and cutting off the rotation or whatever. But they've leveled up the quality both internally and externally of the, of the girls they're able to get and also the quantity. But um, that's the, the path most guys take is that they date a bunch, improve their skills, up level their quality, and then they, they get more serious with a girl and then that eventually doesn't work out. And then they're back into going on a bunch of dates again. Why do you think it doesn't work out in, in the end? Like, like what's their long-term like goal? Is it just to like be able to get, more women like do they have like an idea that hey i'm trying to build the family or a i'm going to be the bachelor life some, some want to be build a family someone you know i'm giving them the skills to accomplish whatever goal it is they want i'm not telling them what they need what their goal needs to be so so you think you can give someone skills to set up a family of course it's, it's already happened tons of times okay where like I, i'm trying to think of like in your personal experience where you where you've kind of like how your personal experience adapts to that. Cause I kind of question whether you can actually- All, all I'm giving them is, is higher chances that when they talk to a stranger in public or online, that it can be turned into a hookup situation and or, or well not or, and potentially a uh, romantic or, or sexual relationship. Um, and so guys can get a girlfriend right away. They can, you know, build a rotation right away. They can just go and sleep a lot of girls and not make anything serious. I don't tell them what they should do. I just help them have more options and I'm giving okay, them Okay, so, so you help, so you help them with like the logistics of getting them back to your place and sleeping with them kind of thing. It's, and As one example. That's kind of, so that's kind of more of it. So I don't really see the claim of, of building that like long-term relationship off of that. Well, I don't understand. Okay, so maybe you're confused. Well, well basically, I, I, just, I just bring up the point. You're making a big claim. You can help guys in all these aspects of relationships when you're only one dimension of it. So, well, it, it depends on their individual goals. So let's take a guy that wants a relationship. I teach him how to generate a whole bunch of high quality options so that he has a choice. Whereas before the training, maybe he had zero options or maybe he had a few options, but they weren't that attractive, right? Or maybe... You know he's gonna have to wait a long time until something falls in his lap or comes along because he can't proactively generate him, edit himself because he doesn't have the proper strategy and tactics so i equip him with that and then he can be, you know then he goes on the dates see who he has chemistry with genuinely and then naturally they end up usually gravitating towards the girls they click with the most and i helped them facilitate that at least to make it all happen in the first place. And then they're just enjoying each other's company from there. Okay. So, so what kind of environments are you increasing their odds for this type of woman? What do you mean? Like what kind of settings are you like you telling guys to move to from like just 
to, to get outside and, and meet these women? I'm just trying to think of like whether you actually- The three main sources are online, Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, night game, bars and clubs, and daytime game, which would just be streets, malls, wherever you happen to see women in public, that it's not that's not a bar or club. Okay. So, the, so at those three sources, like I call most, like two, at least two of three of those, I call meat markets. Like people are trying to hook up on Tinder and, and Bumble. People are looking to get picked up at, at bars and clubs, like often. What makes you, what, what do you, what long term prospects do you see out of girls in those scenarios if they're out advertising? I, I think that's a gross overgeneralization and, a, and an incorrect stereotype. Um, like Hamza okay. makes the same point. Hamza says that all casual sex is bad, as one of the last guys was saying as well. Only virgins have any worth. I think that's silly to say that. Um, and also, it, you can't like Tinder is so popular now. Most of the girls that you see in real life are also on Tinder. I made that point when I critiqued Hamza's video about Tinder being dumb. Um, it's not that everyone's just there for a cheap hookup. Lots of people are getting into relationships with these applications as well. But, but how, are, the, how are they? How are they judging the? How are they judging the interaction though? It's all on sexual attraction, and they're looking for that. No, I would disagree with that entirely. Uh, at first, at maybe like when the guy is choosing which girl to go out with, it she has to be above his physical attractiveness threshold for what's acceptable. But from there, it's all about the chemistry on the date, how the vibe was, how they enjoyed, you know, learning about each other's lives and, and interacting with each other. And those are the things that guys are are taking into account, which has nothing to do necessarily with game. But I'm giving them the vehicle so that they can be in those dates and that they can have these experiences, and so that when they find a girl they want to keep around, they know how to keep her around. Okay. Okay. I, I guess, I guess we just disagree on that one and we can move on right there. Well, <laughs> let's go again. Ahead. Like it's a very strong claim to say that all girls on Tinder are worthless. Well, I'm not all saying women. all girls on, I'm just saying the environment. It's like, uh, when you go to, would you try to find a wife? Like this is an extreme example. You wouldn't try Where to, are you find supposed a wife to meet the girls then at the These strip club are great places to meet girls. Well, Where? I'm just saying that the, like, here's the thing about your long-term goals. You have to think of like, are you, do you have even have the leverage to be able to get what you want in a certain scenario? So like right now we have a system where even if you're like the best, you're the best looking guy, you have the best quote unquote game. The laws are the vows you agree to when you're in the United States. So you don't have the leverage to to like really like keep her on your program. Like your well, standards I, well, that you say, that's, another, that. that's another thing right there. I'll, I'll look at you to finish, but let me just comment on one thing. Uh, so from my perspective, I met my girlfriend on Bumble. Uh, my cousin met her uh, now husband on Tinder. My aunt met her boyfriend of many years on Tinder. So there are you can use dating apps to meet. Uh, to yeah, get, I met. Like, to come I'm saying here, I met her on Tinder as well. That's the only point I just want to make. Oh uh, yeah, I, well, I, I'm just saying that the majority. We're talking majority. Like a lot of the hookups I have on 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 Tinder and Bumble, I'm not going on a date. I'm going to her place or she's going to my place. If you're on a site that that's kind of the culture why search there for long-term prospects and if that's kind of an area you specialize i would say that you probably specialize more in the hookup side of it and marketing yourself to be that long-term relationship coach is spreading yourself too thin um i think well a lot of guys like i said they want to be able to bang more chicks hotter chicks etc i i say that i can help them get relationships um, but I don't tell them that that's what they have to do. I don't want to tell guys what their goals should be because um, there's pros and cons to relationship. There's pros and cons to being single. It's really whatever situation they want. I help them make that a reality. No, no, I'm not. I'm not arguing that the guys have their own goals. I'm arguing that you only have the skills to address one goal based off of your claims. Oh, because I'm not giving like relationship coaching. Like, like I just don't think you're capable of it. Frankly, like, there's nothing in your experience to say that, oh, I'm, I'm good at helping guys form long term, stable family relationships because you're kind of doing the, the bachelor life, which is OK. But I've had I've had a lot of long term relationships. I've been in. Love yeah, and they all them. failed. They didn't, you know, they, 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 no they, matter, like, here's the thing. If you look at from point A to point Z. In a relationship, most, people, most all relationships that everyone has fail, if you want to call it that, aka end, until there's a marriage. And to presuppose that you know 
being in a relationship if it's not for marriage is that the point you want to make you should only be in well, a no no i'm saying that you can't you're not a coach that can do all relationships because you're not applicable I have a you're not plugging you're not you're not plug and play with every single type of goal that's what i'm trying to say okay but i don't you know i don't go around as the relationship expert i give guys advice what to do to keep the girl around and how to keep things interesting and yeah and i'm saying guys shouldn't pay you for that in that certain scenario i'm saying that maybe if they want to hook up on tinder and bars and clubs sure maybe but if their goal is for that that you're not the guy is my argument why because you you haven't you haven't succeeded in that yourself not many people have succeeded in that themselves but you're making claims you're spreading you're spreading yourself thin is kind of the argument i'm making so Okay, so what you someone you would think would be qualified was let's say a guy is a virgin and he goes and has a relationship and then they get married. That guy is qualified to teach about relationships. Oh no, no, but like, that's but here's the thing though you you got to look at the laws. You got to look at a guy that can, is emulating what you want to become. Is that guy more right. qualified than me to teach about relationships? The, the virgin that I'm not saying he's more or less qualified because I don't know if I want to emulate what he has. See that there's more details there because there's lots of people in sexless marriages. I'm not saying that marriage is the end end goal. It's what you want to build as a man. But I've had lots of very fulfilling relationships over the years. Yeah, yeah. You maybe enjoyed her company, but again, like at, at the end of the day, like she was just another person you slept with that you maybe spent some good That's time not with. True at all. Well, you you spent some time with. You can you don't have to get that from women. Women don't monopolize those traits that you're valuing in them right there as i said every relationship that everyone has always ends unless it is a marriage and that can end too so there yeah, is no end. permanence in in to say that someone is only capable of giving advice once they've been with someone forever and, and never going to end it i'm not i'm not saying that you you can't like you don't have advice i'm just saying that guys should be critical of who you are before investing and in poning up money for you Okay, well, to the contrary, I can import some empirical data here. Over the past 10 years of coaching, I've gotten endless amounts of guys into super happy and fulfilling relationships, and some turned into marriages, of course, as well. And they did that with my strategy and tactics to get those girls in the first place. If you're talking about, you know, in the end game now, going over like, let's plan a family with this girl, I don't spend a lot of time on that, no. But I'm getting them to the point where they can make stuff happen with a girl who will like them for themselves. Okay. Yeah. If that's happening, good for them. But I'm just saying, I just want guys to like, look at, look at what you promote, see if it aligns with their goals, treat the world like their lab, and then figure out what they want to do in their lives and work towards it. And yeah, and, I would and agree if, with and that. if you align, and if you align, if, if your goals align with John Anthony lifestyle, go for it. Uh, if they don't, like, just be an informed consumer. I'm more about the autonomy well, we, and that requires complete informed consent. Well, I would I would disagree if you're trying to make the point that unless someone wants the exact lifestyle I'm leading with rotations and banging tons of hot girls around the world, that that oh absolutely okay yeah I'm not making that point no because okay. like you're your own individual person your like, input from you is not going to lead to. Uh, Input between us two is not going to lead to the exact same output because we're different. We're individuals in this world. Like I think a guy, yeah. I think a lot of guys know whether your situation applies to them and they can make an informed decision on their own. So yeah. I just want to, I think we had a good chat. Nice. Uh, do you have any other thoughts before I bounce off? Yeah, these were, these were valid uh, things to raise. However, yourself and the last gentleman are taking very extreme positions. I think like the last guy was saying that no girl has worth unless they're a virgin. Okay. That's a very extreme claim that I don't think hardly anyone would agree with to say that Tinder is all low quality girls is a very extreme claim, especially in most girls that you run into in real life or on Tinder. It's just a more convenient way utilizing technology to meet. Yeah, someone. That's, that's one where we disagree. It's not like a no, there's no quality girls on Tinder. It's like, you're looking in the wrong place. It's like me looking for, like, let's say I'm a mechanic. But you know, Alex and I both found very high quality girls. Are they high quality? Are they high quality though? That's only you guys. I can, know. I can attest that mine is. I've met Alex's. His is cool. He could attest only, that his is. Only you so, guys yeah. know. It's for your goals. 
in there. I mean, I guess it's all subjective, in my opinion. You know, yeah. my is high quality. I, we, I could I could quickly I build an argument very to, to close out here. I, I could say, um, let's say that you know, for some reason you had Tinder on your phone and you weren't aware, and uh, you know, maybe your friend swiped or something like that. And you met some girl that turned out to be like your dream girl. You met her in real life. You bumped into her in the bookstore or something like that, I guess would be an acceptable means of meeting someone. And then you found out you matched her on Tinder. And, and, and then would that make you not want to be with her anymore? I mean, you assess, you assess from what you get, really. You, you like, okay, but if you were super behavior. into this girl, let's say you found out five years down the road that she actually was on but Tinder. I, and I didn't say that Tinder is what makes her a hoe or anything. I just said that there's more hoes on Tinders than good girls compared to ratios in other areas that you meet people. If that makes sense. I agree with that. Uh, to me, that it's kind of a strange claim, though, because like I said, most girls in real life are on Tinder. It's not. It's not like it's this like special. Yeah, and most and most girls in in like real life aren't worth spending a long term relationship with. Okay, well, that's your. That's where we differ. Uh, I mean, if you think that most girls are trash, it doesn't matter if they're on. I don't Tinder think or they're life, trash. But... I just don't think that they're worth the long term relationship because if you think logistically, like what a guy's trying to build, it's individual, of course. But for what I'm trying to build, it's not worth it. I'm putting in more investment for something that I don't find worth it. For better or worse, Tinder and Night Game are, are the two best lead sources to meet women. And then you need to go in on the dates and see which ones are high quality and which aren't. And that's how you choose your girlfriends and your rotation. But to presuppose that they're all or the majority are not worth dating just because they're on an app that's convenient to meet people, I think is a, is a mistake. I think it's more of like you're just going to the wrong source for it. What's the right source? I still don't understand. I don't. I don't know the right source, but I just think that you're going. Well, it's, to... it's only in real life or on an online app. Those are the two options. Well, yeah, you got to pick the right setting in real life too. For if that. you're if you're against online apps, no, I'm. I right. use the online apps and I and I smash on them. That's what I use them for. Okay, but Alex and I both met high quality girls on the. Yeah, yeah, app. and you're picking like. Yeah, you find one out of like maybe a thousand, uh, like ones that just that's, want hookups. No, that, that's just a, a nonsense statistic you're throwing out. Well, I, I'm, it's it's an ex, it's an exam. It's a it's a just a hypothetical there. Like okay, I'm based saying, on like, what? Okay, so let's just go here. If you're trying to buy, like if you're trying to buy fruits or whatever, or, or like you're not going to go to the convenience store, you're going to go to the, the market or the or the grocery store. That's presupposing. You're already you're already presupposing your position before making the argument. You're assuming that girls on Tinder are low quality, and then you're saying, "I want to go to the special fruit no, store." No, no, I went I, based on experience. Place. Like, if they're willing to like give it up that quick, it's usually either I'm not that interested in you, or like, when can I come over? Is kind of the reception I get on Tinder. Okay, so from your own personal anecdotal experience, yeah, and, and that's and that's plug and play for my life. Millions of users. But here's the thing: you can't use generalizable data for every single person because we're not the average guy. No one is the average guy in every facet of their life. If you're going to use average statistics on every single person, we would fail at everything. We are good at some things. We are bad at some things. We have advantages here, disadvantages there. So if we're going to use average statistics, that's how you get guys like Wheat Waffles, the Face Raiders, telling people, oh, it's over for me because I'm average and I'm, I'm not, I don't make the cut for anything. Okay. Um I would I would make the argument that whether you meet the girl in real life or on the online apps, there's going to be ones that are relationship material and ones that aren't. And it, so that's why it's even more important to learn good games so that you can find the good ones and have options to meet a whole bunch of good ones. Otherwise, are you are you literally just hoping to like bump into someone in real life? That uh, no, no, I'm not hoping for. It. I don't know exactly. Like, I'm either I'm mulling the bachelor life or like the long term family thing, and I'm not sure yet. And realistically, I don't see legally anyone in the in the United States having leverage to successfully build that form of uh, long term family the way you used to be able to. Due to you're you're signing the government's vows, so your vows of the standards that that woman has to be in your rotation. Once you sign with the government and you're married, or even if you have a, ch a child with her, those rules don't apply anymore. It's what's on in what's in the laws. Of what you're yeah, I'm in agreement with you there. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly. I'm kind of in your situation, trying to figure it out. Right now, I'm in school, so I'm doing the smash and play around 
play the field type of thing. But long term, I, I just don't think I, I don't think I can give anyone advice on this kind of stuff because everyone has their own unique goals. Uh, maybe in one facet that applies to me. I'm just kind of questioning. You say that you can help guys get long, fruitful relationships. And I'm kind of giving you a little pushback on that. OK, I'm getting them up to the point where they're able to present the best version of themselves on a date. I can't, you know, hold marionette puppet strings past that. <laughs> but I, I've equipped them to have their best chances with the best girls that they can get. And that's that's the important part that they, that they couldn't have gotten without me. OK, yeah, I just I just want it to reflect in the marketing material more than. Okay. Cool. Uh, do you have any other points to make, Caduceus? Uh, no, it was nice chatting with both of you guys. And uh, yeah, thank, I, thank I, you for coming on. Thank you for being. Respectful. I replied to your email, Alex, and we can set something up. So. Yeah, yeah, we will. We will. Yeah. So, just anyone who's not familiar, I'm going to be going on Caduceus's channel, and he's going to be going on my channel, and we're going to get more into uh, the debate. Uh, I kind of stayed silent on this one because I didn't want to be a two on one. But uh, yeah, we're going to have our own separate debate, me and Caduceus. So, uh, stay tuned for that. All right, awesome. Thanks, Caduceus. You want to plug your channel real quick? Yeah, yeah. It's the Vital Message. Um, I go by Caduceus on the stream. The Bible uh, Message? The, the, vital, vital, the vital. vital Message. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, cool. no, it makes sense. Cool. All right. Thanks, Caduceus. Appreciate it. All right. Cheers, man. Cheers. Thanks, brother. That was good. You we keep time? going if you. Yeah, we could, this is fun, actually. I thought it was going to be much different. I thought it was going to be like that one guy that, that came on during that one live we had, and he's like, you're a fucking bitch and like all this stuff. I'm like, I don't want to go sit and deal with that. Yeah. No, I told you it's going to be a good experience. Um, okay. Let's get one more. Let's do one more person. Let's do you want to pop up that super chat about MN? Yeah. Um, well, you're so I think, I think mystery MM is mystery method. I think mystery was uh, the greatest person in this space still is. Well, I, you know, I guess I am now. I, I would probably argue. Um, and Alex, uh, but like mystery laid a lot of the groundwork and I think he accomplished a lot in the game and he was right about a lot of things. And I, my only critique with mystery is that he failed to evolve and optimize his system. Uh, he kind of built a system and frozen in time. Um, and there's inefficiencies. Him and I used to chat on Facebook messenger like four or five years ago. And he told me he was in a low 300 count, but he's over 50 now. Um, but like his compliance model is like the core of my model. I took that from him. I credit him uh, just basically moving things forward. And then when you hit non-compliance, dealing with it accordingly, whether it be on the open, on the kiss, the isolation, et cetera. Um, someone said mystery was a con man, which doesn't make any sense. Mystery didn't have um, much good marketing behind him other than the VH1 show. But he was right about a lot of things. And his compliance model he took from operant conditioning and psychology. But um, yeah, there are a bunch of parts of mystery method in my system, but I've upgraded a whole bunch of other parts and added in a whole bunch of other parts. But there are a lot of uh, core mystery method things in there. Yes. Well, let's get the uh, next person on. So uh, this is QB. He's been on my channel before. We, uh, we and QB already talk. He's not going to troll or anything like that. And he is sober today, or so we think. So we'll. Uh... Yeah, I'm sober, man. Just yo, know, when I was on earlier, trying to get on earlier, like I was literally done working out, um, doing some cardio and everything like that at the gym. So now I'm back at the pad and everything. But um, yeah, definitely, definitely sober. <laughs> cool. All right, man. So let's get into it. Okay. So my questions for John, first of all. Um, how did you meet your girlfriend? Did you meet her online or did you meet her? On Tinder. I actually, before I, I was planning on coming to Florianopolis, Brazil, uh, in February, 2007, sorry, fe February of 2020. And I changed my Tinder to Florianopolis before I got here. So we actually matched before I got here. And okay. then we were chatting, like I had like Wi-Fi on the plane and shit. And we were just talking a lot. And then we met up the second day I was here, February 8th, 2020. Mm -hmm. And then we, we got really into each other. She's like very hyper analytical like me. She's an engineer, but she's also hot and she's cool and all that. And um, she's by down for three summers, good heart, checked a lot of the boxes that I look for. And I ended up, that was one of the main reasons I stayed in Brazil. Oh and also we made things official like 
25th of February of 2020. So this is actually my longest relationship currently. Before this was a year and a half, but we've been together about two years now. Okay, perfect. So the thing is, um, you know, based on your product and your channel, you travel a lot. You've been in many different countries and you've met what women during the day and, and at night. So if somebody was coming to, you know, cross your channel and say, okay, the products that I've seen from John Anthony are like 10 years old, you know, I don't really see him approaching women. That's not in true. Okay. I, explain that. So, why, why, what's the claim? They're 10 years old. So I made yeah. Occam's razor real quick. I made Occam's razor in 2017 and I made okay. Lee's machine in, in 2019. And then the platinum dating system came out, um, in 2020. Yeah. Okay. Summer 2020. Okay. okay. My, my point is why isn't there any like products of you picking up women in Brazil? I mean, I see the um, girls hanging out with you and everything, and you admit it to being on seeking arrangements, correct? Yep. Okay. We're not so, paying the girls. It's a hot girl. Okay. Hold, hold, hold on, separate. hold on, hold on. But okay. for someone from the outside looking in like, okay, you know, I picked up women. I met my girlfriend on Tinder. I think Alex met his girl on Bumble. Yeah, and Bumble. You, and then we see you with these hot girls at your pad. It's like, okay, is he sugar daddy for these girls? And if he's not, then where's, you know, where's, where's video footage of him actually going out by himself, not with your girlfriend, but by himself, you know, bars or nightclubs picking up women in Brazil? Okay. Uh, first off, the main reason is hardly anybody speaks English here. So the infield would be worthless, at least in terms of the audio. Um, second of all, I, for those, there's a lot of people that say, oh, my, my lay count's high because Brazil's easy. I arrived here at 1,179 in February 2020. So I already hit 1,000 before I got here. Hmm. Um, but the main reason, I, frankly, I don't want to be filming in right now. There's a lot. I have endless amounts that's not even edited. I, I film five days a week for a full year and then i did other subsequent rounds in future years of, where of months at a time um i already have endless amounts we need editors to go through a lot of it um there's no reason to be filming when the girls don't speak english i speak fluent portuguese now i'd be speaking in portuguese to the girls and so i'd be useless to anyone okay well here's the thing john i i also travel and meet women and i'll be the first one to admit yes i do pay to play you know what i mean i like to have options like how you mentioned so I tell guys, look, if you don't have the looks, you know, go to a country where prostitution is legal, like Brazil. And if you're not getting what you want, you just pay for it. But the thing is, I can show my audience on my channel the women that I'm with that are non-pros, you know? I can show them that. I can show them being at the club, going to Guadalajara, being at the nightclubs in Tijuana. And, it's, and the thing is, some of them speak broken English, but again, these are recent receipts. So if I was a dating coach and promoted a product, I would say, look, here's something that you saw QB with a week ago or a week and a half ago. Okay. That's a local woman. So let me, res let me respond. So first of all, like your obsession with me being on seeking arrangement, I've openly admitted that a whole bunch of times. There's nothing right. to hide there. It's right. a hot girl lead source. Alex has used it too. Lots of advanced guys use wow. it. It's the quality is much higher than Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, and you can direct message the girls. I have a separate set of scripts, objection answers, et cetera, to screen out girls that want money and to set frames properly so that they understand they're not going to be paid anything. So I just use that as a hot girl lead source, which I, have, I make no apologies about that. Um, number two, in terms of receipts, I have more than the whole industry combined. So if you want to talk about receipts, I've got thousands of pictures with okay, girls. But, I have hundreds but, of hours of infield. Okay. The fact that I didn't record infield in the past couple of years in Brazil, where everyone's speaking Portuguese, doesn't mean shit. I, I honestly disagree. But the Why? thing is, well, again, whether, you, whether the girls speak Portuguese or not, what you're saying is, look, Guys, and, I don't want, and I don't want to be filming it. I already have hundreds of hours of it. I don't want to be going. It's well, a, it's again, you, you're filming your products that you have are outdated. That's all I'm saying. I mean, pretty much five would, to I four. I disagree. Again, the Platinum Dating System came out in 2020, mid-2020. That's less than two years ago. 
and I update it when I drive okay. innovations. So then okay. I update it. Again, from the outside looking in, John, one can say like, okay, he admitted to being on seeking arrangements, and now you're so saying stop, that- Stop right there with that claim. What's wrong with that? Well, seeking arrangements is- It's a sugar daddy site, yes. Thank but you. But when you go on there with pro pictures, did you know that most of the guys are old and fat and married without a picture? You now yes. contrast very sharply. And when you have specific sequences to screen out girls who are looking for money, you don't even you don't even meet up with those girls. But so you yes, admit, there's a sugar you, site, but yes, you, there's a method to bang girls for free. Okay, but the thing is, John, you admitted to meeting your girlfriend on Tinder. So if you're a guy that quote unquote has game, why do you pay for a sugar daddy website? What a hundred dollars a month? I'd rather go pay a girl in Tijuana for that amount, bro. Get it I already up. explained it's the hot girl lead source. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. On this one. So um, I personally also pay for seeking. Uh, I've said that many times. It, it's it's a good way to meet girls. Now, in terms of whether it's easier to go to a third world country or you seeking, that's just a matter of personal preference. But you can meet girls on seeking. I've even def defended Fresh and Fit on this point. You can meet girls on seeking without paying money. It's totally a lot of those girls are on Tinder too. The thing is, you can direct oh. message them. That's the whole oh. power of it. Okay, but and hold on a sec, because. Mm -hmm. Like lots of the other past girlfriends I've had or girls that we have on our threesome rotation, we got from Cold Approach. One of the hottest girls we got here, we picked her up. At How come you can't show that on camera, though? If that's I've true. Shown, I have over 100 infield polls. Okay, on the girls you know, in Brazil. Do you have infield on camera? I'm not a dating coach for one, but. Okay. If, Does anyone else have even over 10? Any other coach? No. For the well, there, there, there are dating coaches. 15 and 20 infields. Just clap. What? For the record, okay. I have about like 15 infields or so. There, there are dating coaches that post, you know, girls doing infills. And to be honest with them. And I have more infield kinda... than everyone combined. Well, I don't get the oh, point here. Okay. Well, the point is you're not showing from infill footage from picking up the women in Brazil compared to all these other videos that you have. And the infill that you do have. Well, I've like, responded to that. I, I okay. told you okay. to recap. Number one, most people are speaking Portuguese. Number two, I don't want to be fucking filming and feel it's it's hell on See, earth. I just kind of give that a, as an excuse, John. I'm sorry, you know. If, For if, what? I read. I, I arrived in Brazil at 1,179 lay count. I've shown over a hundred times taking girls home from start to finish without edits. And the reason why I can't show a lot of that on YouTube anymore is because they took down fucking Tom Torero's channel. They took down Squat and Casanova's channel. They took down Street Attraction. They took down Bradicus. Those people were all showing in field. I'm not going to sacrifice my channel over it because you think that, you know, the world needs to see recent infield. I've shown that I have the, the ability to do this countless times and more so than anyone by far in the industry, by far. Okay. okay. So to come at but, me and say, oh, you're not showing recent receipts in infield is total BS. I'll, I'll, make, one, I'll, I'll, I'll make, make one comment real quick. So just from my perspective, filming infield is a massive pain in the ass. I've done it. Yeah. Uh, quite. You, it requires a lot of work, and there's also a lot of risk associated with it. Like, for example, you can't get your channel taken down, or you can get the girl in the infield to find you, and then she says that she's going to sue you. Yeah. So there, there are there are legitimate risks. Lots of guys have blown up whole uh, countries. Oh, okay. But Radicus in wait, Mexico, wait. Austin Summers in Colombia. Because they were look, they, they, they were excessive with it, but anyways, my point is, it's a risk. you have you having a girl in Brazil, you admitting to being on seeking arrangements in Brazil. Um, I'm not so, on it here. It's not even like a thing here. I was using it in the U.S. So U.S. is only using seeking arrangements in the U.S. Nowhere else. Here, the, here, there's like a hundred girls. It's not. It's popular in Western nations. But, but they do have seeking longer. arrangements in Brazil. Do they or do they not? I don't have it here. They have they have the site here, but hardly anybody's on it. Okay. It's not a good okay. resource here. But again, you admit it to being on there, okay? And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Who cares? I'm banging the girls well, for free. Well, again, it's it's a sugar daddy site to where if you're banging girls, hold on, hold on, John. If you're banging girls off of Tinder and and these other dating sites, you don't need seeking arrangements. That's the whole point that yeah, I'm you trying do. to make. Well, let me let me let me comment in on that. So oh, I'm ahead, someone Alex. who bangs chicks on Tinder. I can tell you the reason I use Seeking, for example, is because it's just like the the cognizant of girls on there is just bar none, and your competition on there is a lot less. So me personally, like I on average have to do a lot less work to get lead off Seeking than on Tinder. Uh, as someone who's done plenty of both, 
I just sometimes prefer seeking because it's just a lot less work. Yeah, a lot less. Let me jump. Let me jump in to add to that. The girls are way hotter. It's the hottest like concentration of girls for any lead source in West. On Virginia. average, yes. yes. On yeah. average, number two, you can direct message them, which you cannot do on most apps that are popular. Besides that, you can direct number- message on Tinder and Bumble. <laughs> uh, so. Right. So if you super liked every if you super liked every profile, yes. I'm not saying no, with, not with even Tinder with Platinum. a super like. <laughs> On Tinder, you can only do it with super, with Tinder Platinum. You you have to match okay. first, right? Of course. In secret arrangement, that. you don't need to match. You can okay. go message girls okay. cold, and there's plenty of girls on there that are treating it like Tinder. They just want to date older guys, and when you come along as a younger guy, that is showing pictures, by the way, that are pro pro pictures. Okay, and there's most of the guys on there are old dudes that are married that aren't showing a picture because they don't want to get caught cheating. And then they find you and they're like, is this a real profile and all this shit? And you can direct message them. And they're way hotter than girls on Tinder and Bumble. That, those are all terrific reasons to use okay. it. And I actually do you, ha- do you have a course? Me. Do you and Alex have a course on, on getting girls off of seeking arrangement? I did. I did. And I think Alex did on some capacity, but the seeking arrangement lawyers sent us a cease and desist and said that we were using the site for commercial purposes. And I've since discontinued that product. Yeah. So I got a, I got a cease and desist from seeking arrangement. Nowadays, I only, I don't sell the course. I only give it to people who like, I just made it free available to my current mastermind members, but I don't publicly advertise it in order to. But it's a whole, it's a whole separate strategy. I have different text charts. I have different objection answer charts. I have different strategy for building the profile, for framing things, for screening out the people that want money. So you'll run into girls that are like, I'm going to want this. I just delete on match or I just block the, the profile. And then um, I frame it in a way that they're not going to be expecting anything. And then the goal, the name of the game on that site, if you're doing to bang the girls for free, is to build enough investment so they don't care anymore. So after like two dates, they're like, well, I really like this guy. And then some of them might be like, well, are you, am I ever going to get anything here? And I say, no, you know, I don't really want you on those terms. You can date me regular if you want. And they usually do. And the ones that don't can fuck off anyways. So this whole thing about you're on seek arrangement, there's nothing to hide there. And that's actually where a lot of the myths came about that, oh, my whole Lacon is hookers. Because I posted a girl on my old Instagram where I posted like 300 closes in a row before it got banned. And someone found that girl on seek arrangement. And I said, yeah, so what? That doesn't mean I paid the girl. I even showed like, here's the whole thing. Like not, no money was discussed and like all this stuff. And uh, Krauser went and said, if he banged a girl, it's on seeking arrangement. That means he pays girls. Therefore his entire lay count is hookers. That was the logic. And, 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 and the thing is, you're going to have some people that are going to unfortunately think, think like that, John. And so, okay. But I've dispelled that, that myth. And I, you know, Alex is saying no. he, he uses it. Do you think Alex's lay count is hookers? All hookers? <laughs> I, I mean, that's to be determined, you know, to you be see, honest with you. Do you see, but do you see how ridiculous and extreme the claim is when I'm showing thousands of pictures, hundreds of hours of infield to say it's all fake but, and all hookers? But the and thing I is, I, I, I'm I, again, about John, I think what, what would help you if you can show something like a pickup in Brazil where you're currently at. Why is know? that relevant? I, don't, I still don't get that. One. Well, again, it, it, it's going to disclaim that when people make, you know, claims that, the girls you're with are hookers. Okay. This is going to provide you some credibility. Do you see it from my perspective? No, I don't because I arrived here at 1,179 lake count and I've demonstrated countless examples of taking girls home start to finish. So even if they were correct, that all my girls here are hookers, I still bang 1,200. They're fucking wrong, but I, you know, it doesn't even make any sense. Okay. They're I mean, saying the girls are hookers because they don't have any proof. They want to dismiss my mountains of evidence as all being fake while they show nothing. Modern life dating doesn't have receipts, doesn't have infield. But he wants to say that my endless amounts of, of receipts and proof, more than the whole industry combined, is fake. And, and it, to me, anyone with half a brain, you know, and all the different proof I've shown can see what's going on there. How do I know what, very clearly what I'm talking about in my videos in, in the uh, the guys get very good, very consistent. You can say all the testimonials are paid actors, too. But, you know, what do you want to I mean, say? I'm, I'm not saying show? that they're they're paid actors, you know, but again, it's you, you have your girlfriend. Obviously, you're in an open relationship. Like a lot of these dating coaches, you know, say that. And 
to me, it's like, okay, if I did this, if I did my pickup in these other countries, then I should be able to do it here in Brazil as well. Most of my most of my lay counts from the U.S. People think like, oh, he just racked up numbers in Brazil. Again, I arrived here at almost 1,200 lay count. Most of the lay count was from places like Philadelphia, Vegas, San Diego, Miami, uh, Dallas, and Charlotte, North Carolina. I, I moved to Poland around 900 lay count. And Poland's not easy mode. A lot of the girls don't even want to come straight to the house on the first date. And I went from about 900 to 11 something. And then I took, I went, I actually went for alcohol rehab before I moved to Brazil. And okay. I didn't plan to move here. I just came here for a vacation and I got and, really and, with Liz and, and there were a lot of really hot girls here. And, and you stay there. So next question, moving along. Um, what's kind of like your definition of game? And, you know, do you think it applies to every dude? Um, do you think any guy that is not your built, cause you know, you're tall, you know, mystery's tall. I'm six, four myself. So I tell guys, look, if you don't have the height and you don't have a certain like athletic body type, women are not going to find you attractive. So can any guy get the type of girlfriend that you have based on your product system? Um, not any guy. If we were to take extreme examples, probably not. And there's a lot more besides looks that would go into being able to get a girl that's high quality. So, so a guy that's like 5'5 five, five and maybe like 250 pounds, can he get the type of quality girlfriend that you have now? Yeah. Okay. And My chick was actually into a dude. I didn't understand it. She was into a dude that was a little overweight because he was. they had a good connection and all this shit. Um, not all women are, are super shallow and looking for a chad. Okay, so how how do you explain that though? Like, how can a five five guy that's two hundred and fifty pounds two seventy five get a girlfriend like how you have or Alex? Because women are uh, responding to hardwired circuitry biologically that responds to survival and replication value. So girls care a lot about how the guy's carrying himself. Does he have a spine? Is he a pushover? Does he stand up for what he believes in? Does he, you know, speak? So does looks sure have any, does looks have any part of that? Yes. Okay. I so, would. I've I've said publicly that uh, based on everything I know and all the conversations I've had with hot girls around the world, I would put it at ten to twenty percent, and it's largely a threshold thing, meaning don't be real thin, don't be way overweight, don't let your beard, or your hair, you know, be unmanaged, wear deodorant, cologne, but once you get past those thresholds then it's more it, it's icing on the cake it's i think people way overemphasize it incorrectly because they don't understand how this works and i have endless data of average guys getting really hot girls because they level up their confidence and coolness and they should still be working on their smv in parallel but it's not that it, the whole equation is smv or that if your smv isn't maxed then you're fucked. i, okay. I would disagree with but, that but my, how would a guy you know be able to attract that type of woman like through a dating app or does he have to go out? Because if women are choosing guys that are physically more attractive, that have the height, have a certain, you know, facial feature, et cetera, how does he like compete with that? Like where, where is it under your product system that he can basically have that same chance to pair, compare to a guy that's different? Okay. So game equalizes things on some level. So you asked me my definition of game. It's making moves that are going to lead to a higher chance of success at every step of the way. So if we took two guys equal looking and one had no idea how to get over approach anxiety, for instance, maybe he doesn't even get into the approaching game at all. Or once he gets past that, he approaches and then doesn't know what to say. Once he gets past that, he doesn't know how to sexualize. He doesn't know how to deal with the cock blocks in the group. He doesn't know how to pull her from the nightclub. He doesn't know how to answer the 14 major objections that come up when he tries to pull her from the nightclub. And at every step of the way, there's better moves than others that are gonna lead to a better end result than others in the long term, which is why it's a skill game and which is why people need to be armed with optimal strategy. Then when he gets the phone number, which text is he gonna send? Is he just gonna text whatever he wants? That's gonna be a lot worse outcome than texting proven optimized text scripts. If you ran data of texting whatever you want versus my text, you're going to get far more numbers convert, converting into dates than just texting whatever you want. So literally at every step of the way, 
there's a better way to do every every aspect. And, and men are still doing game. They're just usually doing a very bad strategy or very ineffective or inefficient strategy. And so when a man goes out to a bar or goes on the apps, he has a lot more shit in his path as obstacles than a guy armed with proper strategy where I'm going to grease the whole slide for him. And he's going to have a high chance of getting that girl back home to bang and also a high chance of keeping her. Right. Okay. That's what I would define game as. And that's why it's dumb when people say there isn't game. Obviously there's better things you can say to a woman than others. There's better texts you can send every step of the way. It's very, like, there's not, it's not even a matter of, of opinion. So anyone that says there's, there's no such thing as game, it, you know, that, that makes zero sense. Okay. So is your product a hundred percent guarantee? Like guys will get the results that they want or do you make a disclaimer? No. Uh, we were a hundred percent guaranteeing it for, for some months and we didn't have anybody that wasn't satisfied during that period. But we can, at the end of the day, we can't get a guy to, to sleep with a girl. So, you know, we, you, most clients get very good. There's about, there's some guys that don't do anything. Right. And don't, so, don't so what about the guys that don't do anything? Would you say, you know what, um, you know, you don't have the looks, nor do you have no. quote unquote the, the game. So why don't you just pay for a, a hooker to, to get your, your sexual gratification? Most guys aren't going to be fulfilled with that. It's not about the physical experience of having sex. A lot of guys want to be approved by a woman that they find attractive for who they are and like them for a reason other than being paid. So men aren't just after the physical sensation of sex, although they enjoy that too. I have a lot of clients that have paid hookers or a lot of hookers in some cases and they feel deeply unfulfilled by that because the girl is just there doing a transactional service and they have no girl that, that so, likes so that. So you're, you're telling me that a guy can purchase your products and improve with women sexually pretty much all the time. And there's never been a situation where a guy has been rejected so many of times to where basically he has no choice but to pay. Like, no, there, ha there has been, there has been, there's, it's not often. I had a guy that, that had been deformed and he wasn't getting shit on Tinder and he, and he tried a bunch of different stuff. He was in an accident and the girls were just repulsed. That doesn't mean the whole game's looks. That was just an extreme example. Um, okay. I thought the guy I took on in a wheelchair, uh, with my client in London, which I've shown evidence of him pulling uh, two out of the three nights on that program. I thought that was going to be, a waste of time to be honest i i was going to give him my best shot but i i figured he had a lot of a disadvantage up against him and surprisingly the girls were very receptive because usually they thought he needed help once he tapped on their leg and he was a funny cool dude and he pulled two out of the three nights and he'd only done three cold approaches he was a virgin he'd only done three cold approaches before that and i think that's very inspiring for guys to see that and it's not some fucking marketing ruse or anything i had the fucking video of it on both of them and so you know, if a guy that's in a wheelchair can follow strategy and tactics to make shit happen, then what, what's everyone else's excuse? They don't look like a model. So, so a guy in a wheelchair, basically, that you coach, pretty much had success with women. He took so, girls home two out of the three nights in London, and I have video of it. And it's on your channel or through your product? Yep. It's on my channel if you search okay. wheelchair. Okay. Okay. I honestly, thought, I honestly thought it was going to bomb. I honestly thought it was going to be terrible. I okay. witnessed it in my own eyes when I filmed it. I mean, it sounds, again, these things sound unrealistic. But what, what real big issue is there with a guy being in a wheelchair? Some girls won't like that. A lot won't care. I mean, I think he's at a, at a really big disadvantage. I think we can all agree on that. Um, yeah, but you know. are most guys taking home two, out of, two girls out of three? One of them was one of the hottest girls in the club that I was like, let's fucking roll the dice on this. And the chick really liked him. And then another one was a fucking stripper. And he's texting me. The stripper lift him out of his chair and put him in the bed. And he's like texting me from the bed. So at like, at like 3 a.m. So would a guy with that disadvantage, if they go through John Anthony, they can pretty much pick up a stripper more or less, right? If, if they it's use your product system correctly, they can pretty much pick up a, a stripper or a girl that's an eight and higher on the looks. That doesn't mean it's a guarantee for every single guy in a wheelchair or, or, or every single guy that signs up. But most guys are getting very good and making huge improvements. Most guys are getting their schedules packed out with dates by week two or three. And just a quick little glimpse into how that's doing. I don't mean this to be patronizing. I want you to understand. 
we get them a pro photo shoot. Then I have a team of girls that picks the top five photos out of that pro photo shoot. And then we apply face app. We apply aesthetic upgrades. So now they've gone from average photos to pro photos to the top five pro photos to the aesthetics maxed out in those top five. I write their bio for them. Now they have a good online profile. They get matches. They do all their own online messaging from my scripts. It's all done for them. Basically, they just copy paste. Here's the right messages to send. It's deductive compliance letters. So it's going to turn that match into phone numbers. Now they have a bunch of phone numbers. I do the same thing with the text scripts. They go through and they plug in the text scripts and that generates dates. And then the, some of the dates are straight to the house and some are in public. So all they've had to do so far is get a pro photo shoot. And now they have like a conveyor belt of girls meeting them for drinks or coffee or coming straight to their house. The ones that come straight to their house, I give them the full game plan for how to close. The ones that are in public, I give them the full game plan how to get those girls home. And now they start getting late. There's like no way around it. It's okay. Let me, taking let, me just, let me just say something real quick. So we've just yeah. been going for over two hours. So uh, QB, let's just give you like five, ten more minutes. Yeah, I, I, I think I think the last works. last one more question. I think the last question is. But what's? Um, can you respond to that? What's? What is your thoughts now that you know that that that's? And we teach them all the part. I I mean, for guys specifically in a wheelchair just situation, or are you can talk just, about in general? For in general, what do you think of that model? To me. It, you have to have the looks to be even considered, you know, but yeah, that's a misconception. Of, Alex and I have endless data pointing otherwise. Most of our clients well, are average. John, can, can you admit uh, this? Uh, let, me, let me, since my name was brought up, I'll clear up my position. So okay. John and I slightly differ on this. I All don't right. think it's 10, 20 percent. I think it's maybe like 50 percent. But we both agree on the fact that gaming is an extremely important component. I probably slightly differ on John and the level of importance. But I do agree that game is important. I would probably say that the extreme situations are really hard. So I'm not going to claim I've only had one guy uh, who had a severe uh, uh, whatever disability who was able to get some results. Uh, I've had also ones where it didn't work out. So that's just kind of my. Okay. But what, what, when you say 50 percent, you're probably like looking at the cases where it was off the threshold. If the guy's morbidly obese, if the guy is letting his beard grow out of control, or has body odor, like little things like that. That's a huge problem, right? Okay. But those things can be rectified quickly. The, the the message that everyone needs to be a Chad or they're fucked or that they need to be very good looking or they're fucked just simply is not true. And that's not just my opinion. Most of my clients over the past 10 years are average looking or a little bit above average looking. I get them very consistently banging girls above an eight. So how is that possible if, they, if they're not good looking? Well, you know, again, me personally, I would just like to see those average guys maybe come on your show and show the girl. But I've show the, show the girl though from using your system, from using John's dating product system, whatever it is. We have, we have I would, that. I, I think it would be nice to show your audience, okay, this is the guy that brought my my product, and this is the girlfriend that he's with now. We've got a lot of that, and we have it shown. When people sign up for a 30 minute call, we, we send them a PDF of, of tons of proof and there's screenshots from clients showing the girls. And we do show that when the okay. guy signs up for a call. My, my, my last question, Alex, I would say, so would you say, you know, cause I pretty much, when I was on Alex's show, I said, look, geo maxing, going to another country, you're gonna get better results with women. And if you're not getting the results, you can pay for it. So, okay, well, where did my most of my lay count come from? Remember USA? Yeah, I I, I know, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Making John. a different point, John. Yeah, go, ahead, go hold, ahead. Hold on. So would would you? How come on your channel, since you live in Brazil, you have a beautiful Brazilian girlfriend? You know, that's I'm going to keep it factual. Say if somebody wants that, okay? Or how about this? How come you don't promote guys to go and travel? If they say, hey, you're promoting this game, but I'm not liking it here in the United States, let me go somewhere else. So how come you don't promote that on your channel? Promote what? He's asking, why don't you promote guys to travel to, uh, like do travel maxing or whatever? Oh, it's not it's not pragmatic. It's not realistic. And, and that's not why I moved here. I, I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're you're so, having success though. You're in an open relationship. You're having your three. I've, I've been doing that and, for ten years. I was in an open relationship in all the U.S. cities with a, a girl that was a nine plus. Okay, but, for her but my point is, again, if somebody's struggling here in the United States, 
how come you don't promote saying, hey, you can come to Brazil and basically do what I'm doing? Correct. It's not it's not realistic. Most people are tied down to their job and it's not like moving to Brazil is the answer. There's plenty of guys that have tried that. How, how is it not realistic when, when you've done it everywhere? How is it not realistic when you've no, done hold it? On. Let me let me let me okay. respond. It's not I'm not having su good success here just because I moved to Brazil and people aren't going to have magic success just because they moved to Brazil. I'm living here because the ratio of hot girls is much higher and the girls internally are much cooler than the girls in the U.S. who have been ruined in a lot of ways. But the, the vast so majority of my that's not having success, though? Hold on, John. That's not having success in, in Brazil? If you're saying the girls are a lot higher, they're a lot cooler, which I've never been to Brazil yet. I can say in Mexico, the same most thing. Most of the receipts I've shown are not from Brazil. They're from the U.S. Most of the infield I've shown is from the U.S. All the infield actually is from the U.S. So what? Right, but you are, showing, you are showing girls in Brazil. So if somebody. So that's, that's where I'm living. I'm showing like stories okay. of where I'm living. But, my, but point, have, my point is that somebody's saying, look, I want what you have and I want to go to Brazil and do this. They should be able to do that, correct? No. Okay. It's not easy mode here. I've had lots of fans or clients try to move here and they don't get laid at all. You need game here too. It's not like a Thailand or an Indonesia or something like that just because it's a poorer country. It's not easy mode here. And I, like I said, it's, I didn't just get a hot girlfriend because I'm in Brazil. I've had a, as a standard only dated girls that are nine plus as the main or, or, the, or the girlfriend for over 10 years. It's always one way open. It's always they're bisexual. We always have lots of threesomes. I've been doing that for over 10 years. So the fact that I now currently am in Brazil doesn't mean that people have to move to Brazil to get a life. I, like I know people don't have to move to Brazil. Again, my point is if somebody's came to you and said, hey, I'm struggling here in the United States, you know, the women are either obese or, you know, the matches that I'm getting are subpar. I would like to go to Brazil and and have the same success that you have. If one of it's your not, students, if one of your students say, said that to you, you would just tell them what no or it's not that easy i would say that's i would say it's not that simple the language okay. barriers the language barrier right off the bat is huge hardly anyone speaks english i already spoke spanish before i came here so i learned portuguese pretty quickly it's 90 percent the same vocabulary but without portuguese you can't speak to anybody okay that's so let's just one. say if they learn the language okay can they still have the same success that 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 you're having there in brazil no you need game i said all right <laughs> there's more hot there's more hot girls but to pack up someone's life and move to another country is a pretty big deal and not usually realistic if they're working a job tied okay. to an area unless okay. they work from home but you know to your point i've heard and which is why i've purposely avoided thailand i've heard with game in thailand you can bang three to four girls a day without game you can still bang one or two just for being white so if someone wants to go get laid a lot in an easy mode place, go to Thailand, go to Indonesia. I will never go to those places for a long period because then people are going to all say, oh, and I don't want to either. I don't, I don't want it to be easy mode. That, that would lose the appeal. What um, would people but, say if you went to those places? I mean, you have the receipts to back you up. So what would be like I had, a, I had a client that lives in Bangkok. He's a 300 lay count. It's all online and it's easy in Bangkok. And to me, that's not a very big accomplishment and it's an inflated lay count. Okay. But it's not as simple as just going, you know, unless it's Thailand or Indonesia or someplace where it's very, very easy, where you don't need game, uh, you know, to, to do geomaxing. You know, being white in play in, in certain cultures and stuff like that, there's no arguing against that. I agree with you on those points, you know, all things considered. To, to, to me, and this is going to go to you and Alex, I agree that territory doesn't matter. However, as long as you meet the looks threshold. So if a guy's attractive looking in the United States – women are going to find them desirable no matter what country it is, you know? And the other point where I don't believe in game is because the women that I have hooked up in Mexico have been from nightclubs and I speak very little to no Spanish. It's because, okay, he's tall, he's black, he's American, you know, kind of has that status and it falls in line with the black pill looks money status. So attraction is not a choice. And so when women find something that, that that they like, regardless if he speaks the language or not, they're going to be submissive to him. You know, they're going to make okay. it easy for him. Your situation in Mexico 
right? Or like a, a white guy situation in Thailand. That doesn't mean the black pill is true. That just means that that person is exotic in that particular location and therefore has an advantage due to stereotypes about, you know, Americans have money or they're, they're cooler or whatever it may be. But that doesn't mean the black pill is true. And, and again, I don't, I don't think it's a debate whether or not the black pill is true when I have thousands of examples of average guys banging hot girls. Well, okay. You know what happens with a lot of my attractive students that are really struggling? The guys that look really good, they're like, yeah, all my friends think that I'm crushing it because I look really handsome or I look you know, really like a hot guy. And they're like, that helps in the beginning. The girls are like a little more interested in, to talk to them or they, sometimes the girls come up to them. But then they don't know what the fuck to say and they don't know how to get the number they don't know how to text they don't know how to run the date the, the one guy was just telling me in ireland he's on like three hour dates and the girl gives him a hug goodbye it's not a magic solution if you're good looking that you're going to start getting laid all the time well again i've even in the united states bro i've been to all them places you've been to san diego vegas miami countless nights hooking up with chicks literally at the end of the night where the guy was paying for the bottle service She's walking out with her girlfriend. She saw me. I read her body language. We kiss, and I'm going to the hotel room. You know, so that's where I feel that looks but, always tr trumps game, because you have guys that try to game. No, but you but carry yourself better than these fucking loser bottle service guys too. A lot of the bottle service guys are rolling in there like dressed to the nines, and, and they're like huge pussies, right? And the girls don't like them for that reason, but they'll take their drinks and shit. It's not, it's not all – you're trying to make everything down to looks. But you carry yourself much better than those guys too, which is a huge factor. Yeah, but at the same time, John, I, I would still let guys know, hey, you know, if, if, if you're limited on your looks or, you know, the only thing you can attract or, you know, no offense to single mothers, but single mothers that are overweight, don't expect this game shit. And I'm sorry I have to say it like that to work and you get a seven to eight or a nine or a 10. Don't expect that. If it's and past the threshold, I think Alex and I would agree with you. If the guy is morbidly obese, if the guy is like ultra, ultra short, like they have more of an uphill battle, they can still make shit happen, but they need to get past that, that threshold. So they're not fucked with. I have a question for, for uh, Willie actually. What do you yeah. make? How do you reconcile the fact that Wheat Waffles rated me a three, which he later downgraded to a two and great point. That I was paying hot girls for ten years. Great, great point. So one thing that I will, um, you know, basically align with you, bro, is I feel wheat waffles is full of shit when it comes to the whole black pill and face ratings. Now you have some of these dating coaches that they're looks maxing experts when height plays a significant role. You know, again, I'm six four. I think what you're six six or six three or I'm somewhere six, around. Four. Mystery was 6'6". Six, six. Yep. So regardless but, of, but, but hold on, regardless of, okay, you don't have the facial features as a Chad or a Tyrone, women love men. Women by default are attracted to men that has the height. So yeah. again, rating a face. But that's not know, the only, that's not mm -hmm. the be all end all. That'll give, that'll give an advantage. Sure. But like my old business partner was five nine. He banged hundreds of girls. I've had lots of short clients that have banged hundreds of girls. So do they have the same advantage as me? No. Can they still bang tons of hot chicks? Yes. So to me, to say that like, yeah, height is an advantage doesn't mean like the guys that are short are fucked. It just means they don't have as much advantage in that category as a guy. Like shorter clients that I've had have made up for it by working out, dressing better, improving their game a lot. And once they can put girls through the funnel and, and get regular hookups, all the girls that care about their height, who cares? There's tons that don't. And you see shorter guys with, with taller girls than them all the time that are hot. But but I think guys, when they come to dating coaches, when they see someone like you, okay, where you're showing you know decent looking women on the, on on your channel, they're gonna want the same type of results. And all I'm saying is, look, if this shit doesn't work, then you know, get your passport and go pay for it. You know, life is not over, but you know, again, if you look at guys that can attract these type of women, you know, and if this is the only dating coach that can show these type of receipts, then it's, you know, Hey, he's tall, he's athletic looking or athletic. And build. he's a two out of 10. 
well, we waffles said that according to your face. You know what I mean? But again, we waffles is somebody that he doesn't show his face. You know, he doesn't show his face. Right. You know, he doesn't I give um, him that courtesy. For for mm-hmm. another man, for another man to rate another man and not shown his own receipts. See, that's that's the problem that I have with that's why waffles. that's why I showed his face. Everyone has this huge problem with it. Oh, you 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 hurt we waffles, you know. Wee Waffles is a 19-year-old kid that doesn't know shit about women or life or any of these things that is causing endless pain to men because they're obsessing about not looking like a model. And that's why he needed to be fucking called out. And I don't have any apology about calling him out. Right, right. So. Yeah, uh, we, we, we got we to yeah, wrap up. Yeah, you have any yeah. closing thoughts, QB? No, nah, it's up to the channel. QB Passport Flexing. Um, you know, another great you know, round two, I guess, Alex, you know, on, on your channel and um, J.A., man, I, I think you kind of need to do what Alex is doing. You know, let some black pillars come in uh, on your channel. Well, I, I actually I actually really enjoyed this and it went a lot different than I thought it would. And right. I appreciate right. that people agreed to ground rules up front and stuff because I thought right. it was going to be like name calling the whole time. No, no, nah, definitely not. I, I'm down. Alex, whenever you want to set these up, I'm down to do these anytime. Yeah, well, we'll definitely do another one because there's a lot of people who want to come on. And I'm sorry, right. Philly, but we do got to wrap up because we're. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So QB Passport Flexing, Instagram, QB Willie B. And uh, that's that's it from my end, bro. Cool. All right, man. Take care. Thanks, bud. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to wrap up. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think this was overall. A How many people were on? We had 400 live viewers. Well, 400, no shit. 140 at some point. Yeah. Do you have any closing thoughts? Um, I want men to understand that, like, um, you know, just get, getting good with chicks doesn't mean that that's going to be the sole focus of your life. <clears throat> or like I do, all, like I said, I'm, I'm like scaling my company. Like I'm trying to become the biggest dating company in the space this year. Um, I'm, you know, building separate companies on the side. We're going to be doing like a world tour soon. Um, I think every man should strive to be the best version of himself and not make excuses and and take personal responsibility with the hand they were dealt and try to better themselves in whatever way is possible in game in fitness in business. My new company is called optimized lifestyle. It's going to go beyond dating. Dating is going to be a major component, but I want men to have optimized solutions for the other pieces as well, like business strategy, like, uh, fitness, like health and nutrition, longevity. And I think that it's really uh, going to help a lot of men out there to, you know, push a bunch of real experts. Like we're going to have Jay Vincent come in and he's going to handle fitness coaching. We're going to, um, we're trying to bring in Bulldog Mindset, partner with him and have him do mindset stuff. I'd like to get you involved to handling guys, you know, helping guys with mentoring, with online texting. And when we have a team of real experts that are here to help guys as much as possible, right? That that's never been done, and 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 most of the people out there um, are subscribing to people that are just out to fucking take as much money as possible and and leave them suffering a lot. Um, so I'm really excited to you know take things to the next level here with the company and help a lot of guys and also prevent a lot of suffering, like things with this red pill series and stuff like that, uh, showing how dumb it is. And yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I understand this is good. People see it a little bit more like of a human side of me cause I can become abrasive on the roast and stuff like that. But like you've said this a bunch of times, like I'm usually pretty chill in real life. Um, yeah. Then, well, basically what I found interesting is that most people, most people who I met off YouTube in real life, they're usually like slightly less cool than they come off to be. But for you, it seems to be the complete opposite, which is mind blowing that you're actually like, I think downplaying your personality on YouTube. Uh, but I think this, these kind of events are good for people to see like the other side of you. Um, so like long form content like this. Yeah. So, let's, well, yeah, let's, set this, let's set up more of these. Um, we can, um, you know, maybe have some kind of formal thing where people submit, you know, what they'd like to debate in this and that. Um, yeah, we'll make, we'll make it happen. Um, okay. Do you want to plug your channel real quick? Yeah. So if you guys don't already, um, if you're not already a subscriber, check um, uh, John Anthony Lifestyle on YouTube. 
you can follow us on TikTok. It's TikTok forward slash at John Anthony Lifestyle. We're posting three a day now. Um, but yeah, if you go to any of my video, any of my recent videos, just go into the description links. It has all the links to my Instagram and TikTok and this and that. Um, John, I think I would, this sums up the debate really well. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm actually like not as big of a dick as I, I come across in a lot of videos. Not as not it's not really arrogant. I'm I'm just trying to show guys, I've done all this stuff. I went through the blood, sweat, and tears, and I have endless proof of it. So you know, pay attention to what I'm fucking teaching. Number one, but also you know, also look at what I'm showing you about these other people in the space. Um, and don't look at it just straight as hating and cloud chasing, but actually trying to help you guys. You know, I take a lot of shit for it. Like I said, my business loses money. My reputation takes a hit, this and that. Um, but I think it's worth the price to be able to, you know, help guys get, get past a lot of these things that are holding them back. So um, the other big thing I wanted to shout out is we have the eight-week program. If you guys go to – can you put this on the screen by any chance? This is the PlatinumDatingSystem.com on the banner. Um, One second. PlatinumDatingSystem.com. Also, someone asks, what's my online game product? Leads Machine focuses the most on that. If you go to any of the videos in my on my channel, <clears throat> yeah, there we go. PlatinumDatingSystem.com. You can sign up for a free 30-minute call, and we go through exactly how the AWE program works. We teach you online game, like I said to QB Willie. We get you set up with a pro photographer. You get the pro photos. Girls pick the top five. We apply the aesthetic upgrades. You plug into my online charts. It gives you text. It gives you phone numbers. Plug into the text charts. Gives you dates in public. Dates straight to the house. Teach you how to run your dates. Close your dates. Keep the girls around that you want. And then how to do your night game and day game ultimately as well. We do all that in eight weeks. It's a permanent solution. And um, then you don't have to worry about this problem ever again. So. Um, yeah. Oh, bring on Brad. Bring on Brad Smith for a future, a future one. We don't need to do it now, but yeah, Brad, just shoot me a text. Uh, in the uh, in the video description, there's a phone number. Just text that number, and we'll coordinate. By the way, Brad, did you base that name off the Microsoft guy? Because there's like a fucking. I think the Microsoft CEO is Brad Smith. We're gonna we're gonna do we'll do a part two to this. Uh, Maybe not. Okay, cool. All right, awesome, guys. Everybody, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're always dropping some awesome content. Check out John's channel as well. I think this was overall a really solid debate. Until Microsoft's next. president is Brad Smith. Yeah, man, thanks thanks for having me. Like I said, I, I thought it was going to be a fucking, uh, you know, just hurling insults. But it's actually very productive, I think. Like I said, I have nothing to hide. There's like I'm not afraid of any of the topics or anything. You can ask me anything. Um, but I think it's productive for people to hear the other side of these different myths and stuff that go around. Yeah, I agree. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks, right, everybody. thanks, everybody. Hit the like button again if you haven't already. And, uh, yeah, catch you guys next time. Peace. And Jay don't stand in line. I ain't never had to wait. I'm the realest in this game. I ain't never had to fake. Just take a look at the scores. I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models. And you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor, I'm a boss tycoon My dick smell like two chicks before noon